Simpsons Index, an online spreadsheet that is also a podcast. This is the podcast. Coming to you out of SideQuest Studios, this is the Simpsons Index. Hello out there, I'm your host, Elliot J. O'Neill, and joining me not inside Quest Studios, but out in various places in the world, is Danny Rosewell. I'm Danny Rosewell. And here as always, except when he's not, is BT Calloway. Ahoy, hoy. And thank you for joining us for The Simpsons Index, of course. This is a podcast where we watch and review three episodes of The Simpsons at a time, but there's a twist. Each episode must come from a different decade. And uh, who's our sponsor this week? <laughs> We haven't done, we do this so inconsistently, it's hard to keep up. <laughs> Fuck it, NordVPN. <laughs> oh, that's no. everybody's yeah, sponsor. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> God. Um, Maybe we just go with everybody's sponsor. Like, we're also sponsored by Manscaped and Stamps.com <laughs> and also Squarespace. Mm, mm. Today we're sponsored by the Extreme Teen Bible from when <laughs> Jesus got <laughs> radical. <laughs> you too, You can too, kids. For those that think vaping is cool, but maybe they don't need to vape. Maybe they need to vape the Lord. Mm. And anyway, uh, <laughs> this has been a nice bit of preamble to an episode that's going to be extremely awkward to talk about. Yay! Yay. We're all so white. Yeah, like even, <laughs> even white people say we're white. This is the difficult part. I'm very pale. We are upsettingly white. I mean, to be fair, we've all been inside for four months. Thank you, pandemic. So, (laughs) yeah, let's uh, just—I think we just have to dive in and do it. And by that, I mean season twenty-one, episode thirteen, "The Color Yellow." First released in February of 2010, it was directed by Raymond S. Percy, written by Ian Maxtone Graham and Billy Kimball. In this episode, Lisa finds an old diary of the Simpsons' ancestor who tried to help free a slave and. They do like one of those Simpsons flashback stories things. Mm-hmm. And one of them's old chestnuts. As they try and tell the tale of Eliza Simpson. Hey, what did we think? Ah, uh, like unbuttered bread. It wasn't stunned. <laughs> so white. It was just bland. bland. Oh, <laughs> and white. Oh, and I we- mean, yeah, that's, that's the weird thing. I originally was going to say like an unsalted cracker, but then I'm like, I don't want to put the word cracker out there. So I went with bread <laughs> instead. And I ended up at white anyway. So <laughs> shit. So can we get it out of the way immediately? Has any one of us seen the color purple? No. No. Okay. Yeah, so my point yeah. being that as far as I know, there's nothing in this episode as a direct parody of that that's maybe egregious. I have no idea. If there is, we're very sorry. We just haven't seen the source material. Man, we should have um, done our homework. We we, we well, didn't do our homework. I mean, I don't want to blame Elliot anyone. I mean, I don't want to blame Elliot, but I will. Because he only told us like an hour beforehand what episode we were doing. Now, if he told us three weeks ahead of time, we could have added it to the Netflix queue, ignored it, watched Squid Game, then we could have watched The Color Purple. Because we all oh. lead lead busy yeah. lives. Yeah. We, I, I, I'm, I'll be honest, I wouldn't have got to it anyway. But um, Do we have to do the simp? Can we just do the Squid Game Index this week? Like... <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't think we're here to critique their homage of a film or mm. their comments on race culture. That's not really what our strength. No, and I mm. think that you know we can always go with what we do with when we do understand the parodies. Is even if you don't, you should still get it. Oh, for real, and yeah, it should be an episode that is available to people that haven't got the source material because mm. The Simpsons has always been aiming at a younger generational audience than their reference humor, like especially through through all their early seasons and things. Yeah, I think yeah. If, if you have to do your research to watch an episode of a show, you shouldn't... That's a bad show. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, in terms of... Yeah, I, I don't know any direct references and stuff, but yeah, I mean, I'm aware of the Underground Railroad and mm-hmm. stuff, you know, even us being Australians and not this being taught as part of our history, I think well, for all of us attending music uni, that this stuff was so deeply covered in like our fundamental understanding of American music and especially in its relation to rock and roll and the blues Mm -hmm. and jazz. Yeah, that's my sort of main source for these stories. And to be fair, this episode, in terms of story beats, I got, I understood everything that was happening. It was fine. Uh, And in terms of comedy... Yeah. Did you say write this write this one again? <laughs> Ian Maxtone Graham, Maxtone, and, Graham. Yeah. and Billy Kimball. Yeah, when I say it was isn't Billy Kimball one of the Power Rangers? 
Um, no. <laughs> no, he's it, a Kimball wizard. Right, right. Ah, of course, that's where I get confused. Um, no, it was just, like I said, it was just really bland. This felt like someone who had never written for comedy before, but had written TV before writing a comedy. And a first draft of that. <laughs> Yeah, the pacing was really strange. Um, mm. The way they desperately had to like cram their story and felt just like hacky, you know. N- then she turned around a corner and found the next piece of her puzzle. Oh, and uh, then she came right. home and asked Steve, and Steve happens to know the next part of the puzzle. And she turned around, and written on the wall behind her was the final piece of her puzzle. Yeah, but even things like that, yeah. when Homer's like, oh, I don't want you to read that, it's not going to end well for you, I'm sure, and then puts it in the vent. And, and seconds Lisa, later, they're like, and oh, then, whatevs. Yeah. Lisa gets it out of the vent and Homer sees her reading it and is like, what if? Yeah, and it's like, yeah. then why the have that whole the point thing of, of hiding? That? He, like, he can still have the line, look, sweetie, finding out more never really works out for anyone, so let's just skip it. But then, yeah, it was just, I don't know, it was just Not to mention she really started out doing a family tree assignment and yep. ended up doing a Black History Month assignment. Well, oh, I mean, yeah. that's in my <laughs> list of uh, what stood out for you, for better or worse, is, yeah, the fact that Jordan this starts Zanel off as... Corner. Well, it just, yeah, starts off as Miss Hoover doing this thing about, oh, why don't you research a family tree? And then mm. that's po- that. Then it becomes, oh, no, I'm going to do this for Black History Month, which the whole class is doing. And Bart's opening storyline had nothing to do oh, with anything. Oh, man, the whole thing with Willie and the trunk was just to, like, set up M- Miss Thingy looking out and seeing a trunk and saying, huh, trees. And seeing a tree, which <laughs> didn't matter because it wasn't there. I'm, I'm gonna yeah, say the Bart Willie shenanigans. I enjoyed all of it. Like the, I liked seeing them get along. Yeah, even Willie's line of <laughs> "I'm laughing to fit in, but I still don't get it." Like, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, this is really eating into my tractor budget. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> now listen out for the Mikea. Oh, like, the Mikea was funny. I, I I mean, it was obvious, but it was funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he oh. still didn't get it. And that's the that's the best punchline, the sweetest punchline we, of all. We've all been that willy. There's a little yeah. willy in all of us. <laughs> oh. Oh, and the physical comedy of, yeah, pulling out the tree stump with the tractor and the back row back- of flying off it. It's yep. all delightful. Uh, what I didn't like about that, though, is then where it's framed, Lisa's realizing, yeah, she'll do a family tree, the Simpsons, blah, blah, blah. That whole time, Willie fills up the pond and then goes fishing in it. Oh, was, yeah, and catches yeah, a fish and... after he just filled it up with water. I hope someone got fired for that blunder. Oi, Extremely oi. lame to me. Um, that was the punchline. That was a joke, I guess. But what is so it guess you, Fred? Hey, that covers it, yeah. Yeah, I was asking, <laughs> well, yeah, you, you're kind of self-questioned We're there. We're very huh? efficient now. We've done this a lot. <laughs> Post 200s, we're getting subversive. We're, you know, challenging your expectations of what happens. Dare I say, pew, pew, pew. Danny, what's better worse. What stood out to me for better or worse? <laughs> better or worse right, um, moment uh, for you, stand out. All right, my stand out better or worse for you moment, shoot ba doop doop better or worse, um, <laughs> is absolutely that, like, Lisa already knows that all the Simpson women are smart and talented yeah. and powerful yeah. and blah de blah de blah <laughs> She already knows that, so... Yeah. Is she saying that they're all like evil people and she needs yeah. to find a good one? All these smart, talented lawyers and doctors are horrible people that like... I, I guess know. the defense is she's looking into the past and they need an icon from the past, nah, not the boo, present. Boo. I know, I know, I know. Look, I've, I'm giving the show a pass on that just because it's had 48,000 episodes. All right, well, how come if we're looking repeat. at the Simpson ancestry... Yeah. The character that they all end up descended from looks like Marge and not Homer. Exactly. Yeah. There's <laughs> Marge a lot shouldn't of be in there. that flashback. No, that's the thing. And I hate getting, like, because it's an easy thing to get into the continuity of this episode. And it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, they're doing, like, a little goofy flashback story. This could easily be written off as, like, a, a treehouse of horror or, like, Simpsons Bible Yeah, they want to do a period piece. Like I, I get yep. it. Yeah, but they are doing the thing where they are setting it up with the Simpsons continuity, so that does have to factor. Yeah, they're 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 saying it's canon, yeah. sort of. Yeah, and and because of that, then you do ask these questions of like, oh, okay, why is there this perfect looking Homer then and mm-hmm. Marge, where that's not yeah, like you were saying, that's not the Bouvier bloodline, and then that Hiram character turns out not to be part of the bloodline, yep. so he just happened to be looking like Homer, and they had photographed, like, that's just the shit that makes your brain and explode. they just had a daughter that looked exactly like Lisa. What are the yeah. odds? Yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah, it's not great, but I... 
I guess the alternative would be, you know, have someone else star as that character, and then that's going to tilt the hand too much. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You don't. Well, want I still, yeah. I still don't like it, but I get it. Yeah, well, that's why I make the comparisons to Simpsons Bible story. So it's like, yeah, okay, whatever. Continuity timelines. You mm-hmm. you have to have the characters sub in for the characters that they're most like. Whatever. I mean. I don't like the writers, the writers. I'll call them for a first episode. <laughs> I don't like that the writers, like at the end, their big punchline was, and surprise, the Simpsons have been black all along, so none of it's racist because they were black all that along. Was, surprise. Yeah. There was a weird mm. moment where, okay, that gets revealed, and Bart's like, oh, well, that's why I'm so cool. I'm like, okay, Piss that's off. meant to be daggy. So, Piss so off, fight, that's fight, racist. Fight. Then it's followed by Lisa's, that's why my jazz is so smooth. It's like, and that's not <laughs> meant to be daggy. That's meant to be her. That's just as like, racist. Oh, dude. Oh, really? well, then the Homer line as well. If yeah, you... when I get paid less than my white co workers, it's like, mm. Mm. <sighs> yeah no man it's because you're not talented <laughs> <laughs> well and you know the other thing is family guy did this oh, they had yeah. an episode where peter found out that he was descended from an african-american that's and, true like several years before this episode surprisingly so yeah. that felt and that episode's bad <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah so <sighs> It makes me extra disappointed in this one that it felt like a hacky storyline that was done by an objectively hackier show. Yeah, like what are we getting out of this? Wackiness! How was the wackiness <laughs> in this wacky episode? Uh, yeah. Okay, the Olmec head is now in the attic and it is way smaller. So yeah. what the fuck? Oh, and this was, yeah, another Simpsons going through the closet slash attic of oh, memories. Yeah, yeah. Classic. What did you guys think about the shtick of, of Bart, like, waiting to pull her down? That was another weird one of, like, she's hanging onto the rope of the um the attic ladder thing, and he's all just like... Yeah, I'm going to make her wait. I'm like, going to make her wait. And you're making the audience wait for anything to happen. Yeah. Uh, so, animators, the episode's five minutes short this week. It, <laughs> you, potential extensions here, 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 well, and here. That's the other weird thing. It, it has the, you know, quick intro. We go straight to Couch Gag, which admittedly was slightly longer. It was but, a long um, Couch well, Gag. Oh, my yeah. God. And Homer's just dead at the end of it. This is Comedy. A, that's comedy. Comedy. Folks. See, this yep. is why in our bonus Patreon podcast, we're doing the story of the chalk and not of the couch, because <laughs> especially that catch gag has some horrific implications. Wow, did you say exclusive podcast? What? Oh, Available on Patreon. I should, I'm going to say that. .com slash, slash side quest studios. Oh, my. Is it awesome and enthralling content? Exclusive, high end, VIP. For the price of a cup of coffee, you can find out. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah oh, wackiness. wackiness. I did actually quite like when she finds the diary. It's like, oh, it's so dusty, and like the brick gets smaller and yep, smaller. Yep, yep. I was okay with that. Actually, you know, on dusty diary jokes, I didn't mind the whole routine with the dog as well. That mm-hmm. yeah, not only did he chew and blow it everywhere, but then like in true Santa's little yeah. help of fashion of not you know being able to judge the situation, <laughs> trying to bite to... it the fragments yeah. that are floating yeah. by, just like a dog yeah. does. Yeah, very yep. cute. I don't think that it's a particularly wacky episode, really. Mm. Like, in the flashbacks yeah. especially, they're trying to keep it, theoretically, like, toned down and, and mm. self-aware. I think mm. that's probably working to their benefit, really. You don't want wacky in this sort of situation. No. I mean, I guess that comes to my point. is like, what was the story they wanted to tell in these flashback sequences that was so important because to me it was like not a very interesting story moment to moment and Mm. it felt like the more wackier stuff that was like them piecing together the story yeah which was annoying because it felt like they were constantly cutting to a convenient excuse to get the fucking next page this sort of need for a like will they won't they you know is she good is she bad is she good Mm -hmm. is she bad Mm -hmm. surely that's not I don't know. That's really forcing them to to give her this like flippy floppy story that didn't didn't mesh for me. They should just capture a flawed character. You can be scared and still be a good person, yeah. or or cowardly and do the brave thing. Yeah, that's generally where I thought it was going for a moment. Is to be like, ah, oh, look, the one Simpson in history I thought was a good person or did something brave and heroic turned out to be a coward, but then it'd be something about 
but that doesn't mean I can't be, you know, just oh because. Oh my God. There's, when she's like, looks like there's no good Simpson and then doesn't say, except me. Yeah. <laughs> well, have Marge come in and go, you know, you mean well, and I don't know. So that's what I thought they were going for, but no, it has to have, you know, this whole thing about the actual ancestry and, I don't know. Felt like a very cheap cop out to what it could have been an actual, you know, decent heart moment. For real, Lisa, that makes this your opportunity to be the good Simpson. Go mm-hmm. out there and self actualize. Yep. Yeah. Also, your father's been to space. Yeah. Yeah. And Marge is a solid fella. You know, a solid ten out of ten. Whew. Well, that Mount Simpson's a handsome fella, don't you know? <laughs> Lordy me, my yes. <laughs> Are you going to make me spray up my nose? <laughs> got hair that won't quit. <laughs> She's got gams up to here, I say. <laughs> let's, let's, sorry, just quietly. Can we bring back the term gams? I miss it and it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> those are some nice gams there, madam. <laughs> I yeah. say, do those gams go from here to Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> I believe they do. To the Lord's Day, you mean. <laughs> Yeah, look, I can't, I've, if if we can't stop catcalling, let's at least roll it back to a more gentlemanly era. We have to gentrify catcalling, like <laughs> Newtown and Redfern. Yeah, like Sideshow <laughs> Bob. Capital knockers, madam. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, Sorry, on the whole, the not a wacky episode. About? Oh, a tractor, pile of tractors, though. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> pile of tractors yeah, was good. But yeah, and that's the thing that I hated because it was acknowledging its own laziness with piecing together the story and, you know, mm. present time. Yeah, by the second step removed, we're already going to a fucking obscure cookbook. Oh my god, yeah. it's such lazy writing. They go to the library to try and find a clue about their ancestor, and they say, hey, do you have any books written by Simpsons? And she's like, yeah, we've got books written by Simpsons from Springfield, because of course. And here's here's a recipe book. I'm going to flip through the recipes in case there's a written letter telling the next piece of your mm-hmm. chapter of your story. Oh, look, here's a recipe. Man, recipes. You know how you go <laughs> to eat.com and there's the story before? For the recipe. <laughs> oh my yeah. freaking God, those are getting carried away. You mean every time I have to look up the recipe for a grilled cheese and I scroll past all that mm. shit, I could have been learning uh, about my ancestry? No, man, about Lisa Simpson's ancestry. Oh, fair enough. Did either of you pause it and read the footnote? Uh, no, I did not. <laughs> no, me neither, because it didn't say what she was reading it said. Um, yeah, no, it's, I saw that much, that it didn't end where she said. But, yeah, uh, so that, right. that's going to be the writers saying, please, we're being held at gunpoint. Somebody <laughs> pause your... I don't know. I will never find out. Well, the funny thing was when the librarian pointed Lisa to the cookbook, she goes, oh, thank you, Martha. And I'm like, yeah, this is Martha level of fucking storytelling right here. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> and, and then the- Abe just happens to know the next piece. And then Milhouse just happens to have a diary from someone mm. who just happens to have been spying across the street at the exact point in time and needed to write in his diary just in case someone in the future needed to prove someone else wrong. <laughs> the Milhouse bit God, somehow pissed me off just, more than the recipe yeah, bit. fucking strange. Mel- House. In my sleep, I deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> Mel House, of all people, would not correct Lisa in front of everybody. That oh should have been mine. Oh my god, no way. And why did he have that book there anyway? Why does he care? Like, why is he bringing it up now? Was it part of his presentation for I Black guess. History Month? This is my uh, long descendant ancestor who saw this happen. Was that yeah, his presentation? Yeah, yeah. He happened Ugh. to have such the exact same idea. I'm going to use a diary from the exact same day. Yep. That's my... Yeah. That's my... <laughs> Picks nope. up the nanosecond up. Look, if video games have taught us anything, it's that diaries <laughs> always relate exactly to the plot you're it's experiencing. True. If you press A, it opens the page you need it to open to. Has yeah, exactly. that one entry, and then if you close the book and open it, it's just that one entry again. I've played Resident Evil yeah. and so forth. Which is why I have a diary, and all it says in it is, Dear Diary, today I changed my safe combination to 4726. That's it. <laughs> and now there's this podcast as well, so if anyone needs to go through the ruins of my house and open my safe... <laughs> I'm lying and that won't do it, but still. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, how was the heart of this episode? Oh, yes. The bloody pumping heart. The beaten, raw, red, meaty heart of the episode. It Mm. wasn't amazing, Kent, I'll tell you that. I wrote down no notes of heart. Mm. It was reaching for it. It was a poignant episode. Lisa's looking for self-truth and courage in her family bloodline. There was this struggling tale of other Lisa and slavery and the courage to free. Although why she, I don't know, man, she goes out, buys one slave and then 
weeks later decide, thinks about freeing him. Yeah, that was the other weird thing with the pacing is she gets him out of the, you know, Mr. Burns's establishment, whatever, and then they hide with Krusty, but then they're back at the house, and it's like, I yep, thought you yep. were on the road, on the run. What's, okay. Oh, the clown thing wasn't working out. No. <laughs> the crown stick. <laughs> Uh, well, look, stick. Yeah. I just I don't know like what's what do I care if Lisa can't find anyone in, inspirational in her family tree like make mm. me care because I don't yeah well I thought that sort of sentiment from Lisa was at odds with just the discovery of what happened to this poor person you know the mm -hmm. my ancestor was helping like why she then made it about her sort of felt yeah. a bit at odds with like why we're getting told this Simpsonized version of the Underground Railroad stories, like yeah, yeah, because they wanted to do something for Black History Month but yep. couldn't flesh out a Carl story, so we and he's Icelandic he's anyway, Icelandic. so. And um, Young Johnson pitched the amazing joke of it should be called the Above Ground Normal Road, and oh. you just had to build an episode around that. Yeah, look, I hated that joke. I did like everyone's reaction to it. Like, oh, that makes much more sense. We should do it. Yeah, yeah. That was that, that got me surprising. You do like mm. a bit of rhubarbs mm. and peas and carrots. I do. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I really do. <laughs> um, yeah, heart. Um, well, I mean, just in terms of the emotional apex of the episode as well, tying in Mr. Burns with it, one of the things that pissed me off was like, Lisa's at the library looking for further e mm. research and Mr. Burns is like, oh, I haven't heard my father's name in years. And it's like, he's right there. Ask the dude who's related to the person who could piece together that story. Why? You're moving on? You're going to film canisters? What the fuck? I have forgot that happened. All right. Like, why put Mr. Burns at the library if not for him to play a <laughs> now, part in the story that uh, his ancestor Elliot, was a part El of? Do you not get that if it was only his dad, then he's really old and that's funny? It's called comedy, Elliot. The man is old. That's the above funny. ground normal road. Yes. <laughs> but ultimately, did it feel like an episode of The Simpsons? Uh, Mr. Burns is old. <laughs> um, uh, I don't think anyone's against type. However, in terms of the story and structure of it, no, this is so first drafty nothing it's air. weak like like i don't even hate it <laughs> yeah like i i mean they're going for the beats they're going for like heartfelt lisa episode and they've got the mm -hmm. flashbacks and they've got the period piece and the da, da 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 and he she learns a valuable lesson and becomes a little more punchy at the end they all drink but lemonade it, fe it feels like uh, like treehouse level writing like like writing for a week 15 minute skit yeah um, no totally and even like Simpsons Bible stories, you know, an episode which we okayed. It was we had a good enough time with mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. and just yeah, building the story around the other stories. Like I thought, you know, sketch to sketch, that one was like a bit. There were some good ones and bad ones, but I thought the package of the wraparounds yeah. and stuff yeah. was compelling. It's a hot day in a church. Simple. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa's doing an assignment on her ancestry. Simple. I just don't know how they got so complicated and then got such a watered down fucking fantasy tale to go along with yeah. it. Complicated yet watered down. So <laughs> that's crazy. But that's exactly what it is. It's like. Yeah, I don't know what they wanted out of it, you know? Mm. Yeah. All right. Uh, yes or no? Would you watch it again? Nah. I've got better things to do. I've got, there are worse things to do that I, I'd better. That didn't work out at all. Um, <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> you could work on that sentence. That's a better use of your time. Yep. <laughs> and we'd work on uh, what we'd like to change about it, though. Let's justify our time watching this thing. Oof. BT, <laughs> what would you like to change about the color yellow? I mean, obviously, just make it funny. And the more I think about it is, look, don't make it be a presentation for Black History Month. For starters, you've already established that Miss Hoover sent them an assignment on their family tree. And to do it on your family tree makes sense that while you're telling the story of what Lisa at that time thinks is her ancestor. But to make it a presentation for Black History Month feels very white saviors. And, oh, this is what my ancestor did for, yeah. them, for African yeah. Americans. Absolutely um, right. And it just it makes it feel like why you because no one said you had to do this about your own family's relationship to black history because some you've got that joke of oh there's so many obamas and it's like okay so then uh. just keep it focused on the idea that and that keeps the idea of it being the family she wants to be proud of because it's all about the presentation and maybe a growing desperation of everyone she checks out that looks promising ends up failing in some way and she starts feeling more failed and more failed by the past so that ties in your idea of 
uh, this being important to Lisa, and also it just keeps consistency throughout the episode, unlike my, you know, sentences, which are just all over the place. <laughs> Elliot, Elliot, back to you in the studio. Well, that's the thing. Isn't a sentence the ultimate first draft, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the... uh, you, got, you guys don't pre-script? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I plan out all my podcast topics. Good thing, like, I write out all the potential reactions that you guys have, so I'm prepared with my re- replies and everything. I'm very uh-huh. smart. Danny, what would you like to change? Oh, you're telling me. No, no well, he's asking you. Oh, in that case. Um... Uh, yeah, it's like that song, um, Second Solution by The Living End. Mm-hmm. I hate that lyric. I love that song, but I hate the lyric, what I want to say yep. is will I die today? No, what you want to ask is that. I know it doesn't <laughs> rhyme, but... And hey. it's like the Arctic Monkey song as well, Are You Mine? All I want to say is, are you mine? No, all Alex Turner, all you want to ask is, are you mine? Yeah, come on. Are you <laughs> mine full stop? All right, well, so what I'd like to change, um, Lisa finds out she has a relative that was smuggling. Her ancestor gets bullied and chickens out at the last minute. She mm-hmm. like, no, maybe she doesn't give up the slave. I don't care. It doesn't have to be horrible. But maybe Burns takes him back anyway, and she's too chicken to do anything about it. So he brute forces his way through. The flashback does have a sad ending. She's like, oh no, there is no good Simpson in the past. And, you know, Marge says, well, you just make sure there's a good Simpson in the present. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to be someone else's past. Yeah, this is a huge chance for her to self actualize. I think that's really like a powerful message rather than this like humming and harring about will she, won't she. And you need to have someone else good to know that you're allowed to i don't know it felt weak Mm. yeah well i mean coming back to like what you were saying earlier shag about the whole yeah cop out ending of them oh we're actually related to virgil that means we're part black now (gasps) whoa it feels like white riders feeling like ah there we go we closed the loop on the potential racist elements absolutely fellas we've solved racism everyone go home and have an extra large cigar that's it (laughs) him that shamelson eat our heart out and in terms of that i'd say yeah kind of like maybe don't do this episode (laughs) i I feel like that's a cop-out answer for me but like i just solid choice though Like, because, I mean, I don't mind when Simpsons want to go back and do these period things and recast yeah. people and stuff. And, like... Concept is fine, yeah. Yeah, and I feel like The Simpsons, even at this time, like, could write sort of that folksy old-time language so it's fun seeing these characters do that. Ha-ha, wheel kicks, you say, you know, mm-hmm. all that bullshit. Like, <laughs> yeah, but when we're only dealing with The Simpson family, Mr. Burns, and a random we don't, like... It's, yeah. Oh man, they really went out of their way to cram in as many like character references as possible. What do you mean? You know, there was old timey Wiggum, old timey Millhouse, old timey Flanders, old timey mm-hmm. Churchman, old timey versions of everyone possible. Collect all the trading cards, kids. That's that's what you do, and yeah, it gives them you know fodder for tapped out and the various costumes. You <laughs> yeah, have. costume changes. Yeah. Buy now for 200 wheel cakes. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the exclusive currency that's not donuts you have to buy separately from. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's Patreon. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're, we're running out of time on this one. So, BT, it's mm-hmm. time for everyone's final notes. And now it's time. And now it's time for our final notes. Everyone's final notes. Danny, have you got some final notes before we rank this thing? Oh, geez. I actually don't, man. I think we really covered what I wanted to talk about. Um, (laughs) I want to rewrite the ending. I don't feel that they were well-equipped to tackle a racial issue, and I think they felt really, like, well-ready to equip to take the final thing. (laughs) Um, Yeah. I don't want to look too hard at it. I don't like analyzing this this stuff. Mm. I feel unclean. I'm going to have to wash my hands after the episode. Underqualified to do so. Yeah. Mm. Beach, what about you, man? I got notes. Yeah, well, I always do. Uh, let's see. I do. I, there's a line Homer said of, um, I lived in the past once and I got out for a reason. I'm like, okay, that's kind of funny. Solid line. Yeah. That actually led to one of my favorite jokes of the episode, way better than any of the tractor stuff. Mm-hmm. And a thing which I almost want to get is Marge's little uh, quit while you're ahead sampler than yeah. cross stitch. Yeah. yeah. Fucking amazing joke. I would put that on my wall, even though it's from this episode. Yeah. It was flanked by a uh, quit while you're ahead. It's like when we went to go see Carrie and we left as soon as she got crowned prom queen. <laughs> oh, it's like, it's just man, so- I was so busy writing down that note and I forgot about that one. Uh, now that memory's tainted. Yeah. Now, it was just so labored to get yeah. there. 
Um, especially for other references that I had to look up just quickly while I do that. Julius and Ethel Rosenberg were apparently spying for the Soviet Union in the United States. Mm. And uh, the march from Selma to Montgomery was a civil rights march that also gets a joking reference here. So those ones you need to look up, but the <sighs> Kerry reference they had to break to a halt and punch yeah. you in the face with. Right. <laughs> Just drop it on your head while you were accepting your uh, prom queen award. <laughs> yep. Like some kind of bucket full of, I don't know, pig's blood. Um, this kind of a bit I liked is the, when she, Lisa's reading the diary and it's like, I have no idea what the future will hold, which is true of everybody. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's kind of, because it's such a like, narrative device in such suspense, I had no yeah. idea what was in store for me. It's like, yeah, no, that's everyone. Uh, and the Mr. Burns disapproving of the waltz and making them change it to 4 yes. 4. I thought that was really because it's still, they need to make it 4 4, which to the average listener would sound normal and fine and easier, but they had to make it sound like they were extending certain notes. It was notes. very I, uncomfortable, wasn't it? Yeah. They did a great job of that, so well done. And just causing catastrophe with the dancers. Um, again, we went to music school. This <laughs> is a bit that I've thought about a lot, and it was like seeing it here is like, oh, it's from this episode? Damn. Uh... Yeah, again, if we weren't so many episodes in before we had the idea of good jokes in Bad Simpsons. Yeah, uh, yeah. this that would be a good episode. Add it to the pile. But uh, yeah, well, just to bring it back down with a bad joke, not even a joke, is like Lisa's doing a presentation and a laptop crashes. Uh, computers, oh, right? It's like what a waste bed. of time. Like it's not, it's not anything that's awful. It doesn't God. make me want to shout at my TV. It's just like, really, we're doing this. Computers, am I right? <laughs> It's the animators going, how do we extend this episode even more? And they slam the desk and all of a sudden their computers are malfunctioning. They're like, what? I got it. Record the screen. This is Hold going on, in. Kevin. I've just had an idea. Uh, and that, that is all I know. So Tell me, depressing. Back yeah, you're reminding the whole pointlessness of the whole uh, Virgil and Lisa in the past joining up mm -hmm, with the clowns. Mm -hmm. Like all that for was Krusty to go, oh, you're too talented. Especially you can't be more talented uh, than this talentless uh, hack. It's like, then why did you have the guy playing violin singing old Kentucky clouds? What a waste of time. Clouds. Yeah. Waste of time. Old Kentucky clouds. I didn't mind Colonel Burns' uh, price investigation thing with Hiram Simpson. Yeah. Looking uh, at him like he's a horse and checking the teeth and all that. Yep. yep. I, I even like the bit where he's like, your price is a delightful surprise. Yep. And then when it was a pair of shoes, I liked that. And then when they got divorced, he sent one of her shoes as part yep. of splitting the settlement. I'm yep. keeping the laces. Loved it. This episode's yeah. bad, but good joke. Mm -hmm. Oh, and this story will be told by my descendants, Ken and Rick Burns. Mm. Uh. <sighs> what in the just as is this joke? Um, oh, yeah. And uh, my final note. Oh, no. Two more. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> you, Jeez, this, Ellis, who are you, me? Uh, the whole, how am I going to half of my hair? Abraham Lincoln, what are you oh, doing? Oh, God. <laughs> wherever yeah. the fuck we are. <laughs> What the that fuck was, was this? <laughs> and oh, they spent shit. so long on this bit as well. I'm re now I'm realizing why I forgot so much of this episode mm, coming yeah, in because yeah. they stretched out so many uh, of these episodes like Gak. Yeah, I've you know switched to a, a new B. I think it's a B four sized uh, notebook, and um, it's not even filled that page. It's you know I have barely have any notes on this one. It's There's not so, a lot. Going it's on. just such lazy writing, you know. They're just like yeah. then well, just fuck it. Abe Lincoln writing. turns up. Who gives a shit? What else is old timey that people will know about? Get me the fuck out of here. I'm done with this episode. <laughs> Let's just say Abe Lincoln did it. <laughs> yeah, look. Well, it ends on such that note, and then the whole thing is like Marge being like, "Oh, you're also part French. Remember Bouvier?" And Homer's like, "That's why I like to drink. You're not really the uh, uh, drunk." And then mm. da, 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 da. they yeah. close out with the French national anthem yes. in this episode about <laughs> yes. uh, U.S. history. Yes, it's time to rank this thing on the Simpsons Index. We rank using our six-point scale, which starts down the bottom at failure. Ooh. Maybe if the episode was just meh, you give it participant. But for the positive rankings, you got okay, bronze, good, silver, excellent, gold. But for the best, oh, the very best, the episodes which the Simpsons could not exist without. You give Cubic a Cody i I'm going to go first. Let me show you how it's done. I am failing this one. I just... It's so disappointing on so many levels. And, like, during the final notes, then I'm like, oh, yeah, there were a few jokes out of this that I like. It's like, but it can't save it. It's just... Mm. It's fundamentally so bad and flawed. <laughs> BT, what do you reckon? Ah, uh, 
I, j- I don't feel enough to fail it. That's my thing. I just don't really? care. I don't. Uh, arguably, this is the, might be the example of not caring that much is arguably worse because I just I'm gonna forget this. I'm gonna really struggle to yeah. remember it. And this to was an opportunity in, uh, for them to do, make a powerful statement. Yeah, mm. and it was to be entirely fair, an opportunity them to them to fuck it up entirely, which mm. they fucked up the message. But I don't. Okay, and again, I'll give the caveat of if this is does have some references to the color purple that we're not getting because we haven't seen it. There might be some more egregious offense to be taken from this episode that I'm un- unaware of. But as you know, having just watched it and struggling to remember it even now, it's lazy and it's bad. But I just don't care enough to kick it in the pit of failure, which again is arguably worse. <laughs> And Danny, please finish it off. I'm afraid I'm... Am I finishing it off or are you finishing it off? No, and I, I already you, went. You yeah, he, already, already he went first. He Jeez. failed. I'm participating. Oh, I am, right. St- I'm starting to think otherwise, but uh, no, I'm, I'm going to sit on true. it. Yeah, it's, it's tough. Also, it was hard to know whether I should have stopped the podcast before when it looked like you were having an actual heart attack. But then no, seeing was... a cat <laughs> appear, my window is <laughs> open and she just <laughs> leapt in from freaking nowhere. It scared the shit out of me. It took 10 years off my life. <laughs> and she went, kablang! Yeah. Like she just jumped out from three stories and banged in through the window. It just Cats like fucking, a shotgun. Oh my God. She came in through the podcast window. There you go. Um, what would you like to give it? I'm going to fail it, man. I think it was really an opportunity for a powerful message or an uplifting message or to say something about race if they really wanted to. I don't think they should. Um, yeah. Man, this was a fumbled toss, a catch. I, I don't speak sports, you know. It wasn't, wasn't, it didn't, didn't land in any aspect. Yep. They popped yep. the ball yeah. when they should have <laughs> passed it. <laughs> <laughs> Popped fast. It starts with a P. What else do you want? And how are you sitting there, B2? I'm not happy with either, I'll be perfectly honest, because failure always, I attach some degree of malice to it. That said, participant means like, ah, oh, look, you tried, sweetie. Why don't you run along? Yeah, fuck it, fail. I don't know if they did try, you know? <laughs> that's why I just said, I, that's why yeah. I just said, oh, fuck it, fail. Like, that's I'm why. just thinking about the, Between the, 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 the two Lincoln of, thing. Yeah, of Man, like, it... uh, a gra- I, I'll say it, I, I bid it no ill will. I bid it some ill will, but not a lot. I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to kick it into the pit of failure. I want to be like, oh, look at that pit of failure. There's a sandwich down there you might enjoy. And it's like <laughs> stupid enough to just walk itself in. And I'll be like, ah, bye. Well, that's why, like, mentioning sort of the jokes that I liked, I'm like, well, maybe it deserved a participant, but I feel like it's, like, there the w- bad elements are dragging that down. That's something I really got from the discussion. There were a couple, like, funny bits, but... And then Abe Lincoln mm-hmm. turns up, and then Abe Simpson happens to have the next piece of the story, and then she and goes... Mr. Burns and arrives for no reason, and gives him a so- tiny fragment oh, of story. Man, and- it's just not well written at all, and it's, like offensive that they would be so lacy and yeah. go through with it yeah. so i'm gonna call it a, a structural failure but a content participant the overall i'll give it the fail though all right well unanimous failure we are giving this episode the, the index, index finger, finger! <laughs> i'm just I mean, it's gonna be a small finger just poke it <laughs> <up>. <laughs> the index finger. To, yeah me and shag just being all tough and chests out with our f- index fingers yeah. drawn and you're just sort of back behind yeah. like, it's like guys i mean look just see me after class maybe we can fix this uh come you know episode why don't you just the index finger. <laughs> <laughs> it's very shining of you <laughs> again another movie which i hadn't seen did not need to see it and know it for the shinning i uh, maintain mm-hmm. i should correct that it's everyone likes that movie it's about time mm-hmm. Is it? I thought it was about a guy who went mad and tried to murder his family. This guy. This guy. This will be the third unanimous failure from season 21. It'll be joining the greatest story ever told. Remember when Homer and Flanders went to Israel? Oh my <laughs> lord. Yeah. Oh my lord. And Flanders indeed. came back as a vampire? Another one that was like weirdly <laughs> racist and offensive. It's Gosh. Just was, and lazy. Yeah. And lazy and bad. And, uh. and it had Sasha Baron Cohen in it. it t- oh, that's uh. right. Uh, and uh, also the devil wears nada shag you weren't there for that one but that's where homer becomes carl's assistant and goes to france and he's suddenly good at his job but uh, overworked and and then they try to ship marge and flanders oh that's right that sounds awful 
Yeah. <sighs> Although, Rough you know, times. I mean, I've seen Streetcar. I'm down for a little Marge Flanders. <laughs> Look, <laughs> fan fiction is different. You can write as much as that as you want, and you can find it now on SideQuest Studio. No. Um... <laughs> <laughs> we are not opening up our podcast for fan fiction. <laughs> You know, like, that could be a good new f- episode of Index Specs, though, like us shipping characters that will never get <laughs> shipped in The Simpsons. Never say never. You're a dame and I'm a fella. <laughs> yeah, stay tuned for my fucking uh, Lenny and Helen Lovejoy fanfic. Oh, let's wow. see how that works out. I yes. call them Henny. All right, <laughs> uh, before we move on, we must ask, <laughs> is that reputation justified? Oh, we haven't done one of these in so long. <laughs> Is that, that reputation, reputation justified? Is it? Robert Canning of IGN. Robert the Feather Touch Canning, how the hell are you? <laughs> he gave this episode a 6.4 out of 10. I mean, I don't care enough to get angry about this. <laughs> That's an IGN one, it's to gentle. be fair. It's very gentle. Yeah. <laughs> Almost as if he was touching it with a feather. (laughs) He said, as a whole, it fell flat. I guess it's difficult to find humour in slavery, even for the Simpsons. (laughs) (laughs) Those bastions of comedy. Mr. Burns is old, (laughs) (laughs) haha. Wheel cakes, you say. (laughs) Uh, Emily Vanderworth of the AV Club as well. had a. Why, what's a Vanderworth? It's, in this case, worth the C+. It's also quite low. (laughs) Quite low for the AV Club. Is that they only go down to a D? And that's like a both reviewers turn the submarine key sort of thing. Yeah, like, yeah. C is generally agreed as like their bad ranking. Um, but yeah, saying there was some funny stuff, but the majority mm. of the episode was a disappointment. Yeah, yeah. I'm on to the next episode, <laughs> which is or do we I don't not know yet? yet. <laughs> ah, mystery. Mm. And we are back, and we just watched our Teens Era episode. This was season 13, episode 22. Not only the last of this season, but it's also the last episode from season 13 that we're reviewing. Woo-hoo! Yay! Ooh. The last episode of our season of, of Springfield? Uh, of, of Not yet. No. Still got a few more before that happens, but no, this is the last episode of season 13 chronologically for The Simpsons, mm-hmm. as a matter of coincidence. And it ain't no badge because Bop has got a brand new badge. First released in May of Or 2. It's directed by Pete Michaels, written by Dana Gould. In this episode, it's basically a retreat of Homer the Vigilante and a bunch yeah. of other episodes. As, mm-hmm. uh, Homer's the new uh, chief of police in Springfield under his new private firm, Spring Shield. Yep. What do we think? Well, first of all, let's not ignore the fact that Elliot just said it's not the badge, it's Papa got a bread. We're not just going to walk through walk past he tried the, to what you past just said that. He tried to i know he thought the longer he would talk the more awkward it could be to go i live in awkward man <laughs> i will go back to this so we can discuss it uh man, just a little drive by a- james brown joke man <laughs> my god look i was actually surprisingly impressed with this episode i'm always a big dana gould fan dana gould fan danae gueld goyold right i think he's a great writer i think he's a great writer and this one surprised me like again and again with how fast paced how like how much action was going in the background gags and things mm-hmm. um uh it felt like three episodes long and then it got to a halfway point and i was just like damn i'm in for a treat and then the yes. very end of it somehow really disappointed me isn't that oh, weird wow. when it turned out to be maggie was Ma- Spoilers. Whoa, 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 spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> when it turned out the mysterious shooter wasn't the Chinese triad with the g- little guy that hasn't done anything yet, I was just like, oh, yep. come on. He hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was Maggie with a rifle all along. No, this is. Um, I mean, that's what's good about this episode. The ride is a lot of fun, but when the ride stops, you get the whiplash. So it's a very, but it's a packed episode and one that I would call efficient. That's not entirely right because there's a lot of things that don't make sense if you think about them, but the clip is so quick that you don't really notice at the time. You yeah, this really... might be an interesting one because mm. I hate it. <laughs> I... <Ooh. laughs> it's a great one to play start to finish. Um, if I remember yeah. correctly, it started with a heat wave, right? It did. Again, a rip off of Bard of Darkness, the uh, pool mobile episode and all that. Yeah. yeah. See, mm-hmm. I think maybe that was just sort of the angle that it was bothering me from, that it just sort of seemed to be a retread of so, so so many many things. things. Absolutely. And I did write the note, maybe this episode is going to depend on your personal taste, if you like it or not. Mm -hmm. I found this one... As opposed to all the others. Yeah, I mean... (laughs) 
I mean, personally, I don't like this, but I'm going to give it a cubic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not one of the, like, everyone's going to come to defend Monorail, no one's mm-hmm. coming to defend Lady Gaga, you know. <laughs> and then we got all these episodes in the middle of that, and I think this one does. So anyway, let's hook into this one. Danny, as the most enthusiastic about this one, what's a moment that stands out to you for better or worse? Uh, if, uh, if anyone's got unchambered, hit, hit, my, hit um, me up. BT, better or worse? I walk into a room chambered, man, you know that. Um <laughs> It's got to be Homer's list of... We know I've had a lot of jobs. Yeah. yeah. And then just riffs through them all. And it's just... It's, again, the delivery. The fact that Marge has time to get up and leave. And I think she puts in her hair curlers or something. Oh, good, isn't it? Um, Um, Yeah. But but I do like... Story-wise, this is Homer riding the high of his success. But it's not from, as he says later, being lazy, stupid, or corrupt. He's actually doing a good job and is actually feeling good about that. So that's nice. Uh, Do have one note, though. Sorry, Elliot. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, I timed it as well. That was 21 seconds of him wow. listing off his jobs. As matter and as like as long as it took, I did enjoy it because, yeah, it is all about the delivery and how deadpan it is. It's like someone saying a line like, it ain't no badge, Papa's got a brand new badge. You know, they just drive by and then the same one's over. Assume no nerd is going to turn around. After 21 um, seconds. Yeah. Sorry. That was yeah. my point. Yep, yep. Uh, my only question, though, is he lists homophobe. Is homophobe a job? Depends because how that much would, money you make doing it. Because that would explain why people keep doing it. <laughs> uh, if, you're, if someone's getting paid, you know, maybe we have homophobes. And I don't want to finish that wrong sentence. Uh, yeah, it just stuck out as of all the jobs you could mention. Why did you mention that one? But yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, because I thought the joke ones were like Smithers, Poochie, and all that. That one, yeah, does leave a sour taste I mean, in the mouth. He was, like, he was Smithers and Poochie, so yeah, and that's funny to hear in the context of mm-hmm. yeah, saying actual jobs and like. Without the Simpsons context, those don't make sense, and that's why they're funny. Mm-hmm. But that's what stood out to me. Elliot, how about you? I haven't got one chambered yet. I oh, haven't got one chambered yet. Fucking oh, well, okay, okay, okay. Something that really stood out to me, I really liked all the zingers during the during the riot. I mean, they weren't yeah. crazy surprising, but when the guy used the cinder block to break into the cinder block house, I, I, yeah. I, I, I giggled, man. I giggled. And then they broke into, Breaking the, into the music, music store, store and they, they all come out as a yeah, marching band. It's, it's so bad, but it's so good. It's so perfect. Oh, and then and then Kent is like, I think I know what the viewers want, Arnie. Mm. Is my what house a- okay? <laughs> When's it my oh, time? Oh, you mean your palace, Kent? <laughs> Don't hate yeah. me because I bought it at the right time, Arnie. When's my right time, Kent? When's it going to be my it's right so time? so yeah. good. Just to skip ahead to the playlist episode, Bitter Arnie Pie is rare and amazing when it happens. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad they've never overexplored him. Oh, Even if dude. you're, you know, not putting together a playlist of those episodes and you're just doing, you know, a clip show of all yeah, Kent and Arnie moments, sure. yeah. yeah, you're including this one. It's a good one. Ah, oh, joyous. Um, I mean, that's what really I'm enjoying about this episode. It's the, it's the little moments. It's not the, it's not the brilliant of the overarching yeah. writing. The broad strokes are not very good when you stop and break them down. I mean, especially one, there's a bit where a quick joke I liked, which is, you know, they pan past uh, the church and it has, you know, tomorrow Homer Simpson funeral. That's good. (laughs) But then Homer's making his big impassioned speech to the, you know, church congregations like, wait, why are they in a church? Mm. This wasn't set up. They're just here. And it's like, I don't care because we let in with a joke. So that aided the transition. He's in a church. Wouldn't he just be like sanctuary? Sanctuary. Mm-hmm. Now they did that as well. he's done that already. Yeah. 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 Uh, but that's, that's what I mean when I say the pieces don't really fit together if you think about them. But I mean, there were jokes I enjoyed. So isn't that why we're here? For the comedy? For the comedy, Elliot. Yeah, well, I mean, I agree with the positive points that you listed in the riot, but like on the negative side of things, because I think that's going to be my role in this segment, <laughs> um, <laughs> is I thought it was really weird, uh, Barney and Moe's back and forth as they were panning over the crowd talking about what dancing with the stars or some shit. Mm. And then I really didn't like Lenny and Carl's whole car ride thing either. I thought it was stupid. And, it was pretty dumb. And honestly, Family Guy did it better. I'm going to say it. Yeah. Well, that's fine. I will like the bit. I do like the bit where Carl leans out the window and goes, "Hey, jerk! Your voice sounds familiar." Like, okay, that mm. I enjoy. Yeah. And how about me? What stood out to me for better or worse? I actually really liked the heatwave gags at the start of the episode. Yeah, I can mm-hmm. be positive in this one. Good on you, yeah, man. The sunflower bursting into flames and the yeah, newspaper, and melting. newspaper melting. Yeah, and the butterfly just. Oh, I really like the alarm clock that he hits and it like melts yeah. like butter. Oh, it's mm-hmm. so good. Yeah, Butter absolutely. Clock. But then the school gets air conditioning and then fucking Archie and Fat Albert and Fonzie. Yeah, that wasn't great. Show up. 
uh, stay on Riverdale. Like, yeah, they got <laughs> Riverdale in my Simpsons again. <laughs> I can't remember what. Oh, I'm seeing students I haven't seen in years. That was the setup <laughs> for this shitty joke. Boo. Yeah. Yeah. Boo. Yeah, bring in, like, I don't know, Nelson's cronies from season one. We haven't seen yeah. them for a long time. Oh, and then Scotty, ha- uh, 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 we're wasting more energy than Ricky Martin's girlfriend. Boo. Zing. Zing. And that was a shame because it was after the dial joke, the meter. I liked that. And the literal mm-hmm. next line was, we're sucking down the juice like my wife at an open bar. We're wasting more energy than Ricky Martin's girlfriend. Hey, oh, next line. Lana. Heyo jokes. We're sucking yep. down juice like my wife at an open bar. Yeah. Oh, he went can, there. You can tell Dana Gould sometimes is a stand up comic. Zing. Like, but yeah, I liked Willie's dial on measuring the energy. Yep. Glasgow Winter, the next level up. Well Digger's Bum, and then Witch's Teat. <laughs> yeah. Well mm-hmm. Digger's Bum. Uh, play count. Have you guys seen this episode before? Well, Elliot, let me tell you, back when we were figuring out a fledgling podcast, we actually covered <laughs> this episode. <laughs> But the hosts were too drunk to actually release the recording. <laughs> <laughs> so that's our actually lost episode. I don't even think you have the record of that anymore. Yeah, um, this was actually one we recorded because we in the first 25 of our episodes, I, there's like mm-hmm. five of them that are just me and you. Mm-hmm. And this was recorded as one of them. And I decided to shelve it because... Yeah, I, we were pretty fucking lit in that one. Yep. <laughs> but also, you know, the 201s just don't look that great on the spreadsheet. Thinking mm-hmm. about redoing some of those episodes uh, once we're caught up, blah, blah, blah. We'll get to that later. Yep. But yeah, and I, yeah, I lost the file for this one. So, I mean, if I can dig it up, maybe I'll put it on Patreon.com. So it's like Quick Studio. And then... mm. Anyway, have you seen it, Shag? Oh, I have seen it in overloaded multiboard adapters worth of times that didn't work <laughs> hang on let me try again i liked it i've a seen witch's it teat amount. overloaded socket i've seen it a flaming santa claus's worth of times <laughs> uh hated the fucking jingle bell was yeah i did also have another problem i have with this episode where when marge goes home and this is all your fault you had to plug in that appliance and he's, it's like everyone was plugging shit in yeah why are you yeah. blaming homo in fati- you don't blame him. the straw for breaking the camel's back yeah, you blame all the all the straws. It was all the straws' mm. fault. Mm. Yeah, why does a camel need that many straws anyway? Why did God oh, build such weak camels? Oh, this for a punchline. Why did the camel need so many straws? Uh, to get to the other side. Hey! Wackiness! Was this a particularly wacky episode of The Simpsons? Whoa, isn't oh, it stealing? Yes. No, it's just looting. Yeah, okay, <laughs> I'll pay that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on, we even talked about the heat wave jokes, the Fat Albert shows up. Well, they did hit with Summer in the City. That's like mm-hmm. the right move. Oh, that yeah. was the right call. This one is another one of the, like, because it's the last of the season, it felt like they were using up their music budget. While you're mentioning that, the one while Wigan was cruising around, um, yeah, I was just thinking, like, the camera work was gorgeous in it, and mm-hmm. it really, like, leaned into the atmosphere of that. Yeah, it's a Sopranos reference. I dug it. I really dug it. Have either of you seen, though, Sopranos? I have seen of it. Um, (laughs) What the fuck does that mean? (laughs) It's a perfect answer. No, no, no. It doesn't say it at all. Yeah. Look, no, I can't. It's on the list because it was really like that first show that really launched the, you know, uh, TV, new new TV Golden Age. Prestige Um, Television. Yes, that's the one. Uh, But I've never got around to it. No, neither. Oh, I got like three episodes in, and I was like, "Yeah, this is this is this is Sopranos. It's exactly what it is." Yeah, you were like, "None of these people are singing. This is false advertising." <laughs> They're all clearly either tenor or basses. What the hell? And I thought it was going to be falsetto advertising. Oh, fuck you. Yep, <laughs> fuck me indeed. <laughs> um. Yeah, just based on that, there were so many music cues in this one as well, and like they did the dragnet sting as well, and I thought. Again, this episode's going to get a lot of comparison to a lot of episodes, especially Home of the Vigilante, and they do a dragnet bit in that episode. Yeah, true. Yep. It's only the music cue in this, and I will say, I think that then leads into a scene I really liked, which is like, hey, do you sell hats? Yeah, to people sometimes, people with heads, maybe. Yeah. Um, I guess this falls under wackiness as well, and kind of a ripoff of Mr. Plow. Uh, the commercial, what did you guys think of that? Monster put in wallet. Very strange. Apparently that joke is Dana Gould's favourite thing he's written for The Simpsons ever. Seriously? Seriously? That was a quote. Oh, man. Yes. Nah, I get it. Sometimes it's just the dumbest little things that become your favourite thing. Yeah. Mm. I wanted to mention while we're wacky that he throws boiling cheese onto fucking Snake. 
I don't know what's wacky about that. That would hurt. Dude, a lot. that was freaking startling. Oh, mm. muy picante. It was yeah. weird because he was holding the beer and you're like, he's going to hit him in the head with the six yeah. pack. And then, nope, boiling cheese. Yeah. I thought he was going to do the thing where he drinks them all at once, like Popeye. Mm. Yeah. Just, yeah, Australian perspective. Uh, Americans, we don't have cheese fountains in our service stations. <laughs> and when, I don't know if you saw this when you two at America, Shag, they are often in service centres, petrol stations, whatever. Oh, the, I didn't notice, but... Oh, just like, not necessarily a fountain, but at least a liquid cheese dispenser for a packet of corn chips or whatever. Oh, and right, that's different. It's that's still... your Ameri- liquid American cheese. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I got... Cheese fucking... should not be a liquid. <laughs> mm. Well, it should. It's just weird that it's like in those kind of places. It's a hypertensile yeah. semi-solid. It's more like phloem, really. <laughs> Non-Newtonian fluid. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, wackiness. Uh, yeah, uh, cheese. Yeah. Just, it's bizarre to see cheese sometimes where cheese... Should really not be. strange move, man. Like, mm. I don't know. I think I expected a different play from him there. Well, I assume that after this episode came out, Australia realised the danger of having open cheese vats in their service stations <laughs> and, and should... removed them all immediately. It should have been less horrifying. He should have just grabbed the back of Snake's head and bashed his head into the counter a few times, sending blood and teeth everywhere. Less okay. horrifying is what I'm getting at. Apu's like, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> He's already dead! <laughs> he already wishes he was dead. <laughs> But yeah, back to the commercial. Like, I did like the whole thing. It's like, is this you? And yeah, just the randomness of a monster crawling through the window. I don't know. I just think it should have been a bit more efficient, though. But I think the inefficiency of it was the point, you know. It's got the whole overextended delivery of the phone number. Uh, Yeah. I don't know. I just don't get the vibe that it's a commercial. It's It doesn't feel... It's more of a skit. Yeah. Like, whereas the Mr. Plow one, you know, that was obviously, yeah... Dad's got a home business and he's using his family yeah. as actors. Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, true. It should have maybe been like Lenny in a dress as the old woman or something. Uh, Simply dial 636 547 347 I take nice. Brad did it better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the whole, oh, can you believe that's Lenny's house? We just changed the Duna cover? And fucking hell. Yeah, that was kind of... Po- I do like how kind of condescending Mike is, uh, Mike, Marge is about it. <laughs> Classic Mike. <laughs> Look, Mike? a mic's right in front of my face. I got confused. <laughs> but how was the heart in this episode? You know, move along. Uh... Look, it mostly comes down to Homer's pride at actually being good at something that we can be also proud of him That's for. That's true. He wasn't like I was expecting him to like be another batten down, smash up the place like like in that other one. Uh, look the other way. Yeah, he's a scam yeah. I thought it was going to be a off. big scam, or he was going to be a the fucking taking the place for a ta- for he was gonna be put, squeezing the thumbs that's the word thumb and the screws he's gonna be screwing his thumb mm. oh. <laughs> yep that's sort but of no shit. he mm. was surprisingly competent in his way the yeah. world was a better place until he realized he had no power to actually fight the criminals that he was threatening to fight yeah I do also like the ending line of uh, look if you kill me someone else will take my place and if you kill them someone else will stand up and if you get rid of them that that's pretty much it you'll have you'll, you'll rule the you'll town you'll rule the town <laughs> yeah I'll pay that but yeah and, and I guess even as, as flimsy as the excuse that Homer did feel responsible I mean yeah he shouldn't have but oh. like he owned up to it and that was kind of nice mm-hmm. I guess yeah, I don't think anyone should have blamed him for it, but yeah, still. And but that's about all the heart we've got in this one. Again, it's not it's a very shallow episode. It's fun, but there's not really a lot of depth to it. Speaking of not really a lot of depth. <laughs> now that I am the law, I'm gonna make a lot of changes around here. First, I'm gonna cut overhead by freeing Otis the lovable town drunk. Uh mm-hmm. so then Otis comes out and goes, You can let me to go, but I'm just gonna keep exposing myself at the mall. Yep. Then the writers get distracted and there's never a second thing. He says first, there's never a second thing. They cut to uh, yeah. Bart and the truth telling the lie detector. Yeah. W- were we just in the were we in the corner? Yeah. No 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 so anyway. the seventh thing. Ultimately, did it feel like an episode of The Simpsons? <laughs> you know, ultimately it did. So like big picture, mm-hmm. it was a whimsical tale of Homer having yet another job that yep. bumbling gets into high stakes adventures with the town mafia somehow doesn't die we all drink lemonade that's mm. a simpsons episode 
And Maggie shot someone. And Maggie shot someone. It's all there, but, you know, it has no actual heart. Just a hollow shell wearing the skin of a Simpsons episode. Oh. Yeah. But it's an entertaining skin. And isn't that the real skin? <laughs> Can we stop saying the word skin? It's uh, getting uncomfortable. I guess Your skin's getting maybe... uncomfortable? Yes, maybe it's getting... crawling. <laughs> well, you better go catch it. Oh, um, nice. Hey-o, zing. hey Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's what I'm realizing is my big problem with this episode, that maybe it feels too much like a Simpsons episode. They are so aware of themselves in the yeah. history that they're like, okay, we can go, we've been going for 13 years, we can start repeating ourselves now. Fine, yeah. but what else new are you doing with it? And I, I don't feel like this one achieved, you know, justifying going over the ground again. And I find myself just like, Making the direct comparisons to the episodes, Home of the Vigilante, mm -hmm. Mr. Plow, Mad to the Mob, like, all yeah. the fucking better Fat Tony yeah, episodes. Yeah, they are all better episodes. You can't argue yeah, that. Yeah. But uh, this yeah. one did say, I mean, you could be like a pizza man or an organ grinder or leaning tower maker. Did you say pizza man? You, you are listening by broken dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I did like that one. <laughs> and Danny really liked that I one. I loved it. I loved it. Wow. <laughs> oh, God. He likes sensitive New Age Tony. A lot, he's a man with a lot of heart. There's the heart of the episode, guys. Imagine if you just wanted to make pizza or leaning towers and you kept falling down into this life of crime. Just when you thought you were out, they keep pulling you back. Uh, and you turn a corner and here she is just listing your broken dreams one after another. <laughs> Way to go, Mike. <laughs> 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 and our one guest star for the episode, Joe Mantegna, returning as Fat Tony, as always. Oh, he Classic. Is, yeah, he's a he's a treasure. Actually, not always, always. Sometimes he's voiced by Dan Castellaneta, if it's just one line. Anyway. Anyway. Yes or uh, no, what, do, what do, oh, did you have? Uh, thing? I was going to say, just, just speaking of his uh, good deliveries and his lines, as, as much as I'm very mixed on the fact that he threatens Homer over the radio, mm. like, I like, it's very efficient, it's very quick. But I don't. I, Except I like the radar how, love fucking bit. Yeah, forget that part. I was getting to that. Um, but I do like how just well again in universe how efficient he is, it is. It's not like he's gonna come to his house and nail a note to his door with a dagger or anything. No, no, he knows he's gonna just get on broadcast radio and take care of it that way. It's easy. Today's mobster is very busy. Uh, but yeah, then the radar love just kind of went on and yeah, whatever. I don't know. That's what has me feeling like it's so first drafty in a way as well, though. Mm. Like, yeah, that's fair. But again, I think it's going to come down to taste because I think this episode definitely knows what it's doing and it's being meta about it. And so, like, I think it is going to depend how it, yeah, hits you. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being a big old sour ball, a warhead sour candy. <laughs> okay. Which is also this episode's sponsor. Oh, you got it. <laughs> it's this year. Well, I wish my mouth was so much more sour. Yeah, yeah friend. <laughs> mm, unpleasant. Warheads. <laughs> yes or no, would you watch it again? I don't think that I would. There's lots of really? little pieces in here that I'm very happy with. But, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to pretend it's not, you know, basically riffing on itself. It's, it's yeah. covering itself and then saying, aren't I clever for nudging and winking. <laughs> yeah, look, I'd watch it again, but not right away. It's like a bag of yeah. chips. You really yeah. you really enjoy it while you're having it, but it's not a full meal, but you don't want to eat another bag of chips as soon as you finish a bag of chips. That's, that's It'll be feel great gross. to have in the background while you, like, I don't know, what do kids yeah. do these days? Play uh, stick and hoop? Yeah, it's Skype on the Twitch. I yeah. don't know. I think yeah. they yeet yeah. now, uh, whatever that is. Man, we'd corner the market if we started a stick and hoop Twitch channel. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no one doing it. It's going to need a low cut top, and I'm set. <laughs> Goes around, comes around, and around, and around. It's Bottle stick jiggling stick in and that, hoop that hoop, skin, stick and hoop game. You know what that's a metaphor for? Puts finger through hand. Did you guys notice <laughs> that, like, Millhouse, uh, when they were doing the scene, where Milhouse is like on the couch, he was yeah. like drawn on the background layer, and Homer was like totally drawn on the foreground layer. Like, you know, when you're playing a game and this one mm -hmm. rock you know is going to be a clickable rock because it looks like yep. different <laughs> to the other rocks. Slightly yeah. different. Yeah. 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 Milhouse was like 100% a background rock there, and Homer was a clickable rock. 
Yeah, and like sometimes when the Simpsons are like dialing the phone or whatever, you know the five keys they're going to press because yeah, they yep, look so yep, different. Yeah, yep. they're different. No, that's yep. actually the complaint about um the Simpsons on Disney is that the digital conversion has made the cell stacking really obvious. That yeah, it, it is a bit more pronounced which characters are in which layers and stuff. Disney, Perhaps. Disney, Disney. If they were going if anyone was going to get animation right, <laughs> <laughs> amateurs. <laughs> what that have they ever done? billion dollar company <laughs> yeah what have they ever done um yeah well maybe watch it again what playlist would you put this in i told you bitter arnie pie yep oh absolutely also riots. ones where homer has yeah, jobs yeah. there's riotsy ones yeah um build a playlist out of that fucking uh rant yeah 21 yeah, seconds wolf, worth of playlist wolf. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go through it and uh, pick yeah. out our rankings for each of those episodes as a nice, like a little playlist for the social media, something for the for your kids to look forward to on the Twitters and Instas and, uh, and the, the hoop Twitches, Facebook um, pending name change. <laughs> uh, but that's you know maybe what you do make the playlist out of. Figure out all the parts of this Frankenstein episode and watch those episodes, and then watch this episode. Yeah. BT, what would you like to change? Uh, j- <laughs> where do you start? Man, yeah, it's the ending. It's not bad, but it is such an abrupt end, and that's where you realize there's no depth to this, is because there's no mm. feeling. It just stops, basically. And it, it is very weird to go from Maggie shot Mr. Burns because, you know, his gun fell out of his holster and it landed on her lap and went off, yeah. versus she has a sniper rifle under her cot and it's just picking off mobsters with expert precision and speed. So that's just, mm, maybe don't do that. Maybe, I don't know, have all the townsfolk show up with guns. It's a confusing message, but damn it, it makes more sense. I don't know where I'm going with this. Try to turn up again. Sure. Yeah. Danny, what would you like to change? I don't know. I don't know. It's mm. something about like him going to the church and appealing to people and then like no one's brave enough to stand up for him so he goes out there alone. There's this sort of like like Ned with the asteroid shelter, you know, mm-hmm. he, he he has to accept his fate and kind of walk out to his death. Mm. I don't mean he has to die then, but there has to be that scene, of ex- that acceptancy scene. Yeah. Like that ending does sort of beg for it to be the, the the asteroid finish and have the rest of the town turn up behind the mafia and all singing kumbaya yeah <laughs> yes yes and they realize they can't shoot anybody because the whole town's witnessing and they're all singing um and then mm-hmm. like f- somehow they uh, the, the mafia are all joining hands with them you know yep. <laughs> and when they're all joining hands that's when they take their guns and they flush them away and everyone's oh kumbaya. yeah and we're, we're all singing and mm. all our hands are being held and then click click handcuff sounds and wiggum's like yeah. you're coming with me boys <laughs> Yeah, I don't know where to begin on this one because I do have a fundamental problem with like Homer's private security firm because mm-hmm. it's immediately yeah it's if it's not Homer the vigilante it's also mayor to the mob and that was obviously a very different take on that and I don't know just something about Springfield is just you're never going to escape the comparison because it's at its fundamental core Homer and his buddies. Mm-hmm. Gotta former... say Springfield is a wicked sweet name though. Yeah, yeah. I got your name. Dude. No, oh, oh, there's a change. No, he finds out that both Lenny and Carl are actually in Spring Hydra. And... Oof. (laughs) Ah. Well, you know, we had Entertain the Elk on the other day, so this is the the day the Simpsons Index died. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) Yeah. I'll get get me coat. Mm. (laughs) All right. uh, We are here. It's time for our final notes. I think we already did the song, did we? Also, now it is time for our final notes. Hello again, and welcome to our final notes. We'll auto tune those later. They'll be they'll sound fantastic. Danny, what are your final notes? You know, I look. I, I we didn't really talk about it, but I was super impressed with that whole sequence. That whole like Sopranos uh, 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 sequence with Wiggum driving and the, the yeah, stylistically it looks the part. And beautiful, muy yeah, bueno. born under a bad sign. It's a, yeah, wicked song. Oh, I I don't think we had enough Otis festive town drunk that's planning to expose himself again, yet again at the mall of course that's how we get out of this mm-hmm. when, when fat tony's about to draw his gun Oda shows up and exposes himself and fat tony's just so overcome with penis that he quits mafia forever not to endorse the whole sexual harasser character but yeah he also has fat tony's entire plan written on his chest as well and so while he's exposing <laughs> himself he's exposing fat tony 
Ooh. Oh, man. Well, there we go. Look, um, yeah. but there's your answer. Something that Homer did earlier in the episode when, you know, cutting costs comes back to save him. Mm. Dr. Colossus, perhaps. Um, uh, I've got a couple others. I didn't like the get your t-shirts here guy. I survived the Springfield riot getting killed in the Springfield riot by the statue. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. It was such a yeah. low, low fruit, you know? And then he says, remember me as a hero. And it just felt really, I don't know, out of place. It wasn't really a, a zinger. No, mm. I think it's trying to comment on the whole fucking like t-shirt sellers, that, especially because this came out in 2002 and something big happened in 2001 where a bunch of people were like having pretty tasteless, I survived this t-shirts. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. Um, there was that part where Mrs. Principal stood up and was like, back in my day, we had people who stood up to fucking dickheads. We called them men. And he goes, I agree with the hideous crone. Yeah, and they, they all go, yeah, here, here. And one person goes, she's ugly. Yes. I thought that was kind of strange. Like, what are we drilling here? Uh, first mm. off, we didn't have like a stand-up about a masculine standing up to ruffians sort of moment with, with Fat Tony. Like, yeah. that wasn't, that, that, that was sort of starting something that didn't go anywhere, I felt. Yeah, um, like, oh my God, you are just reminding me of so many of elements of this episode that I forgot. And I think that's why it's sort of, I don't know, I was a bit Teflon with this. Then there was also the part that was like, I think we all know who to blame. Clancy Wiggum. And <laughs> he says, it's not my fault. You guys are the ones doing all the looting. And they're like, oh, are we still allowed to keep all the stuff that we stole? There's all the stuff that we stole. Are we allowed to keep it? That really bugs me for some reason. Uh, yeah, I thought it was a bit stupid. The the Hibbert going, no, I think that was implied, and then rides off on his Segway. Really and bugged me. Like, yeah, Hibbert of all people. It just wasn't a good out. I don't know. This is that was a weird part to me. Why are you up there saying, "Hey, I stole this stuff. Can I keep it? What, mm. Can I keep it? You just keep it." I think you bring up a good point. I, I really don't like that how much that Clancy was dropped in this episode. I wish he sort of came back a bit more. Like. Again, retread of the Beer Baron episode. <laughs> but, you know, poor Wiggum. Mm, poor Wiggum. And then he sort of did just sidle back in at the end. And, like, while that's funny that he sidled in, he was mm-hmm. sort of absent throughout the arc, you know? He didn't have yeah. a redemption arc there, where, which, which doesn't feel fair when he was sort of the butt of it for a lot of it as well. Yeah, we just get that one scene with him with a muzzle, and he looks so yep. fucking weird with yep. a muzzle, where... What are you doing home from school? Teachers are tired of trying. And, like, it was just, it was a sad scene. I didn't like it. Mm-hmm. Teachers tired of trying. And I don't think it advanced him in a meaningful way. Yeah, we know he's down on his luck right now. What's he doing about it? Oh, yeah. he just sidles and back to square one. Uh, BT, do you have any other notes? Yeah, diddly, I diddly. I'm not going to be able to take this seriously until I can put a human face on it. Marge, does Lisa have a human face? Again, to me, this nice. was like just down to the laziness of the episode. All right, let's get in Lisa emotionally involved and, you know, again, mm. saxophone, home of the vigilante. Yep, yep. and yep. then Fair. just in time, click in through the door. It's like turning the radio station on and they're telling you about the serial killer that's hiding in the bushes outside your house. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be fair, that happens a lot. Or turning the radio on and then after the mobsters threatened you, you go, din, 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 doing a podcast on the road. Din, 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 din. We're going to get copyright <laughs> claim for that. Stop it. Podcast uh, so- love. <laughs> Silent alarm activated. I yeah. enjoyed oh, that. Oh, God. And that really stressed me out for some reason. I was like, God, what, who, who decides to sign an alarm like this? Who would do that? <laughs> People. Someone would. Uh, I do like Luigi's other line of, I'll shine you up a nice pizza pizza. And he kind of just blows on it and then rubs it on his arm. And it yep. just gets grease on his arm. It's uh, I enjoy yep. it. I'll pay that. I'm going to be gifting that. That was a good moment. Yep. Uh, Moe's reverse speakeasy where he pulls the lever. He's like, oh, wait. Uh, didn't need oh, This to was that. so much better the other way around. Yeah. Much like the Beer Baron episode. Um, <laughs> oh my god. Yep. Uh, the city is now free of crime, but overrun with ferrets. Yeah, the ferret was pretty cute. Again, mm-hmm. though, rat milk, mad to the mob. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. People love rats. Uh, Why don't they like their milk? You know, you know how um, like half the episodes of Happy Days are actually just made by cutting up other episodes of Happy Days and streaming? <laughs> no one even notices, really. There weren't even any original episodes, surprisingly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, I like Hibbert's excuse for not helping Homer as he just discovered Thai food. Uh, yep, I mean, yep. Thai, Thai food's pretty good. Pretty exciting. Uh, add to the playlist, I can't believe I missed this, Johnny Tight Lips. 
Oh God, I, love I hated Tomatoes. this. I hated really? this. I, I liked when he's like, "How how's your mother?" I was like, "Oh, whoa, who says I have a mother?" Uh, I mean, the, the second <laughs> one wasn't as good, but fine, Elliot. Why don't we just go get you a golden plated? <laughs> First mention of Johnny Tight Lips. Hey, I liked the silent alarm joke. I can yeah. go the other yeah. way. Uh, how about dibs on his crotch? And then I was like, oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One of these ferrets is wearing a wire. Yeah, okay, I'll pay that one. And finally, the comparison of Maggie to Clark Kent. I'm like, okay, that's all right. That's not a bad expression. Elliot, Elliot, when one of the ferrets is wearing a wire, Fat Tony looks at him and goes, you're not a pet and you're not a friend. You're nothing to me. And the ferret goes, <laughs> Just like As that guy in that Marco Puzo novel, I think. Was it? Mario uh, yeah. Puzo. Marco Puzo. <laughs> it's a me. <laughs> um, um, the whole Apu, you know, you can take a penny and that scene fucking sucked. Mm. Uh, I also hated the whole Flanders arrest thing. And again, it's just, okay, you, you bring back up the established trope of Homer stealing all dead shit. What are you mm. going to do with it? Oh, this. <laughs> anyway. Oh, I kind of liked the whole uh, kids hold your heads up with pride. I kind of liked that. See, I didn't. Ah. Ah, Ooh. interesting. Yeah. Ooh. If we blend everyone together, we'll get like, uh, you know, one person who likes this episode a fair bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the pinata bit, though. They bust open the door and they're shooting a pinata with a shotgun. What'd you guys yeah. think of that? I'm not impressed. I mean, obviously they were going to open the door and the kids were going to be doing something, something. dumb. They were going up to up to their old shenanigans. Yep, those police. Uh... All right, I popped pretty hard for it. <laughs> no, no, I, I liked it. I liked it just fine. Um, yeah, that's all my notes. It's time to rank this thing. BT, please go first. Hmm. So I walked in feeling like if Mountains of Madness was my high silver and Simple Simpson is like my mid silver, this would be my low silver. The more I kind of think and pick at it, though, there are some parts that don't fall flat. I'm not particularly enthused to re revisit it. I'll happily do so at some point. So I'm right in that Brilva border right now. I'm gonna gonna slowly step down into a bronze. Uh, bronze doesn't feel right either. Silver, bronze. I give this a. Hmm. I'm gonna say bronze and blow things out as time goes on. Danny, it's absolutely a bronze. I walked in here thinking silver, but what it is is a bad episode with a bunch of good jokes in it. And it has a mm. bunch of good jokes in it. Um, and a bunch of kind of baddish ones, but yeah, then I don't think it ever yeah. brings it down enough for me. Mm. Uh, like, it's it's nothing impressive, but it's good bits mm. are nice. So, you know, it's great that there's some polished parts in that turd. Was it at least a step up from the last episode? Oh, absolutely. Without question. Like, I enjoyed this the whole way through. I, I absolutely enjoyed it but I don't think it was a masterpiece or anything. Oh, man, what about the part where he finds a lie detector, so he says, so he puts it on himself, and he's like, yep. Lisa, is the door. Lisa, is the Huh, checks out. That's so yeah. good. Yeah. so good. I like that. Ah. I don't think Elliot did from the noises he made. <laughs> oh, no, that's the noise he makes when he thinks something's incredibly witty and just wishes he thought of it first. Oh, no, no, uh, that particular sketch I liked, actually, but I think that's it. It's going to come down to taste like any sketch show where what sticks with you, uh, like, because I was considering a failure when I walked into ooh, this one. wow. But it can't be denied. You guys are right. There are a, a, a decent handful of jokes I liked in this one, mm -hmm. but I can't say that I bronze liked it. I'm going with a participant for myself. Wow. Well, there. Yeah. Look, a bit more structure. I could have kicked this into a silver, but it it doesn't have that. All right. And that will average out into being a dull bronze. This will be <laughs> the second episode from season 13 to get a dull bronze. It'll be joining the sweetest Apu, which we only watched just the other week with uh, Rose and B. That's where Apu cheats on Manjula. Uh-huh. All right, yeah, Dull Bronze, and yeah, that is a wrap on season 13 for the Simpsons Oof. Index. Woo! Oof. Wow, Oof. wow, yeah. Um, mm. But yeah, overall, the rating for season 13 gets a shiny bronze. Um, it was one of those situations where no matter what we gave this episode, it was always going to be a wow. shiny bronze. Uh, yeah, so season high for season 13 was mm -hmm. She of Little Faith, which got a gold by split decision. That's where Lisa becomes a Buddhist. Ooh. And the season low with a dull participant was The Blunder Years. That's where we see the story of Waylon Senior. Uh, wait, so someone cubicked Lisa becomes a Buddhist? Yeah, hey, Ellen 
from Baby Beard what? Media. Oh, oh yes. yes. Belly Baby Baby Bellin. Hey, was that the one with Paul McCartney and on Apu's rooftop? No. Uh, we did review that episode with uh, Ellen, but that's, that's Lisa in, the Vegetarian. That's in like season seven. That got a unanimous cubic. Yeah, oh, fair enough. Yeah, some other episodes that you were on though, Danny. Yeah, yeah Hunka Hunka Burns in Love. Uh, sure that got it. Jaws Wired Shut as well. Yeah, yeah. Blastest Gun in the West. Weekend at Burnsies, the pot episode. Yeah. yeah. Burnsies. Oh, now give me a taste. Oh, man, <laughs> I still do that to this day. Oh, That's, yeah. Oh, it's such a good bit. We were actually, we watched that episode recently, me and my partner, and mm-hmm. it holds the fuck up, man. Elliot's got a partner. And, <laughs> and a pot habit. All right. <laughs> So yeah, season 13 in the bank, but you know, now it's time for the classic era. Now we're going all the way to season two, where we're going to review Simpson and Delilah. Do either of you know what this episode is just based on title alone? Is this Demoxinil? Yeah. Hey, got it in one. What do you think it was, Shag? No, I'm, that was what I think it was. All right. Mm -hmm. I I used Demoxinil. I'm super embarrassed, but this is, oh my God, this is a surprisingly (laughs) personal episode. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to go watch that. We'll be back. We'll be right back. And we are back. And we just watched our classic and final episode for the evening. This was season two, episode two, Simpson and Delilah. First released in October of 1990. It was directed by Rich Moore, written by John Vitti. In this episode, you all know this one. This is the one where Homer Simpson went to bed. Not much hair left on his head. But before that, he took some Medoxanil. And uh, so he woke up in the morning, grew up with a full head of hair and gets career opportunities. Guys, what'd you think? Dude, holy man, this, fuck. Holy yeah. fuck. Like, this is how you Simpsons, man. Take all your other Simpsons and shove it. This is <laughs> it. This is fucking Simpsons, bro. Like, whoa, what have we been wasting our time with? Oof. Yeah, uh, this one hits real different in adulthood. <laughs> Doesn't especially, it just? Especially late, well, not late adulthood. Whenever we're in now, broaching middle-aged, feeling that uh, the, the sting of male pattern baldness ourselves. Oh, yeah. Ooh, <laughs> sure. oh my. And it doesn't fuck around, man. There's a This is a sad ending story. A, a very yeah. bittersweet, much like the story of uh, Samson, I bet. No, not at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> I only know the Regina Spector song, clearly. Yeah, that song is <laughs> lyrically one of the worst things I've ever heard. Almost every line is wrong. Samson went to bread, wonder yep. bread, wonder bread. Lo- yeah. Not much hair left, wonder bread, wonder bread, wonder bread. After his hair was bread. removed, he was captured and, like, tortured. Let's Are we making a there. reference that no one on Earth is going to get? Is Regina Spector culturally irrelevant in 2021? Regina Spector listens to this show and she knows what she did. That's fair. <laughs> Look, aside from that, I thought this episode was incredible. I was just blown away. Mm. Like, the pacing, every line was relevant as well as fast, snappy, and clever. And, like, everything contributed and moved the plot forward. There wasn't a wasted frame mm. of fucking, damn, heart springs. Bro, my heart spring. I meant to say strings, but I'm going with springs now. Bring my heart strings. springs were stretched out. Oof. Mm-hmm. So much stretched out, they became strings. Yeah, yeah that's how they, That's where string comes from, kids. Uh, um, and BT, your overall impressions? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, <laughs> there you go. There you go. From the robot himself, Look, tears. It's not, it's from not the high... robot came tears. Beep. Uh, it's not high <laughs> on the laughs, and it's but it's got that emotion. And again, this is one that you need to be a grown man to really get, or at least someone someone with the concept of age taking something from you. Mm. That mirth of Homer's when he gets it back. Oh my. Oh, that, that's, uh, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, Shit, man. One thing I kind of really thought about in, you know, the, the, the distance between the episode ending and me setting up this record was like, I don't think there's another show that could have done this episode. There's sure. not like, like, I feel like you it couldn't wouldn't do have it. played in Futurama or you American done it, yeah. Dad. Or Bob's Burgers, or even like family comedies that came before this, like you know, All in the Family or Brady Bunch or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. It just it is literally it is yeah. something that could only exist in The Simpsons because they started with Homer being iconically bald. 
Well, that um, leads to what like my overall sort of feelings around this episode were was, you know, it's one of these low hanging Simpsons sort of storylines. What if Homer yeah. got hair? Yeah. And mm. I am so glad they did it now rather than later. Can you oh, yeah. imagine a fucking later season Simpsons Dude. doing like, later what season? If Homer could piss he'd start off with your later seasons. Oh. He'd start growing hair everywhere. He'd be a wolf man kind of yeah. thing. But uh, would get the beard and st- yeah. uh, be a jazz. Daddy, I don't know. What yeah. do they call those? Beat poets. Jazz cat. Yeah. So, yeah, I found this one a very, yeah, again, weird, warm, nostalgic hug because obviously seen this mm. a bunch. But then, yeah, how it hits differently as an adult and things that underlying things we may not have caught as kids and underlying things which may have been cut by Channel 10. Who can say? I mean, all the Nazi references. <laughs> <laughs> and the homosexuality references, too. Yeah, uh, yeah, I forgot yeah, about that. There was a kiss in there. I didn't mm. remember that. My mother told me Dude, never to and kiss Carl, a fool. Oh man, oh, <laughs> this guy just gives everything, oh, and for no reason, for nothing other than he is an angel sent to Earth. <laughs> yeah, you can argue that is really the low point of the episode. Why does this man care so much? But it's not the point, and it's sold so no, well it's he's, because he's like, by soul. Harvey Firestein, who yeah. just. Fucking rules in this episode. He's My God. so good. That voice is just fucking like, chocolate. I think they did cut the kiss from syndication because I feel like I would remember my line, my mother told me never to kiss a fool right before kissing someone. Dude, yeah. that did that's, not happen. That's phenomenal. In Australian television. <laughs> and then, yeah, the encouraging butt pat on his way so out. So good. <laughs> it's, it's just all so good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, uh, one of the amazing one-time Simpsons characters, and as we discussed in a previous episode, Three Gays of the Condo, that, yeah, they have tried to get Harvey Feierstein back over the years, and Mm -hmm. he's like, no, I did my time, and that fucking character was perfect, and yeah, yeah, Yeah. that's the stamp I want to leave on it, which is fucking amazing on his part. That's it. When you're at 100%, anything you add is just going to lose numbers. It's going down. You can only go down from the top. Yeah, that's impossible. 100% is the maximum amount any one person can give. He got me. He fucking got me. <laughs> Way to say precedent. All right, Danny, we'll start with you. For better or worse, what's a moment from this episode that stands out to you? Wow, man. What really stood out is the is the run, the hair run at the start of Act 2. Yeah. Um, mm. It's so joyous and glorious and perfect, and his mm-hmm. joy is so infectious when he wakes up yeah. and, and he runs through the street, and there's just another guy that also happens to be running <laughs> no, through the street. And the he's also, the oh funeral my. that's there is what got me. The funeral who's like, good morning! <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. It's so good. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, and Moe's being open at that time and Barney being there. Yeah, mm-hmm. of course. But yeah, those are the only people that are up at that time. People having mm-hmm. funerals, alcoholics, and yeah. people getting the benefits from demoxinil, medoxinil, oh, whatever man, they call it. it's so good. And and they happen to turn up at the exact same time, they stare each other in the eyes, and they're like, ah, demoxinil! <laughs> it's so perfect. And that, man, that just stayed with me my whole life, I think. <laughs> so is that what it's like? Ah... <laughs> <laughs> It's slower, more, more gradual. It is way more slower and more gradual. It, <laughs> it is like six to ten months before you even notice a difference. Um, yeah. We probably haven't mentioned, but Danny's an avid Demoxinil user. Um, Medoxinil. Demoxinil? Medoxinil? I can't remember what it is. M- Minoxidil. I can't remember what it is in real life. It's very similar. <laughs> I just take it. I don't pronounce it. Oh, God. It's just the white <laughs> bottle with the yellow stripe on it. Um, <laughs> the one you don't drink. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know the one, but it's amazing how true the feeling is. Like, I didn't really think I cared about hair loss, particularly because I don't really give a crap about my looks. I haven't got that sort of vanity, unfortunately. But having the hair come back, oh, whoa, what a feeling, man! You just, <laughs> you do feel like a richer, fuller person, you know, the person you were always supposed to be, instead of that wow. thin, washed out person with the receding thin lanky hair draped over his shining skull <laughs> and if you use the offer code uh simpsons index at checkout you can get <laughs> medoxanil for only uh, three payments of nine hundred thousand dollars thankfully it is so much cheaper than that now i, I yeah. um not that i'm not that i'm supporting or branding but i think i pay mm-hmm. like like what 30 40 bucks a month it's just not heaps it's not bad. What is that's that's like a coffee a day. And Australian <laughs> dollars are like half American dollars. Well, yeah, I mean, I've seen in person the hair regrowth on your part, and it is very impressive. And it's mm-hmm. sort of a you know 
coming from the first episode we reviewed, I feel like we are actually much more qualified than oh, yeah. <laughs> that episode to comment on the topic of the episode. This um, is what you want for this we've episode. Gone out and you done want the a research. host of bald men to review it. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, I've looked into this product myself and it there is cases where it's led to increased heart rate, which uh, for my personal health issues, I decided not to go against. But you know what? I, I bear no judgment. Mm-hmm. I'm a happy, proud, bald man and I and you feel look lo- great. Yeah, that scalp is out and proud. See, that's the thing. I feel lucky in the sense that it suits me. Like, mm-hmm. my brother, it does not suit him. Yeah, I've gone, I've done it, and I don't think my skull is the right shape for it. Just like, it doesn't look right, man. I look like a fucking thumb on a body. <laughs> Beach, what, what's the moment that stood out to you for a bit? <clears throat> Hang on, let me try that again. <clears throat> hey, Beach, what's the moment? Nope, nope, nope. Elliot, show me how it's done. Hey, Beach, what's the moment that stood out for you for a bit of us? Oh, that's the one. <laughs> I have two. Uh, we've already talked on Carl. That was going to be my main one, but goddamn Carl. Carl. Um, yes. Carl. Um, <laughs> one is a quick plug, which is uh, they me- Mr. Burns quickly mentions he watched a documentary on Rommel, the Desert Fox. I was going oh to my fucking God. ask you. Oh my God. Uh, this who, was a reference? If you enjoy scripted podcasts, you may want to listen to Pulp Fury Radio's episode, The Last Known Sighting of Irma Strauss, which features a former Nazi soldier by the name of Rommel, who was in fact inspired by this character because he refused to do things like uh, execute prisoners and load Jews onto trains, basically, to cut right to the blunt. He was eventually uh, given the option to commit suicide or face an unfair trial. Uh, He committed suicide. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Interesting um, dude, though. My gosh. Drama bomb. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. when yeah Burns is coming down from the bath here and goes, Ah, oh, mm-hmm. I was watching the Dumont, and there was a, a documentary on Rommel last night, and I'm like, wait. Yeah, it isn't. And then looking at sort of the brief Wikipedia's, and I was just like, Oh my god, I think BT made a reference. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't want to toot my own horn, horn, but that that episode is full of historical accuracy. Toot toot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also just the revelation now that that kiss was removed from Australian syndication. Yeah. I am pissed off. I am oh, so yeah, mad. Because right? I've heard so many people refer to Carl as like early gay representation in The Simpsons. And I never and I was realized like, that. Yeah, I didn't think not. so. I was like, mm. oh, what are they referring to? Is it like a background thing? Is it the fact he's got a, like a breakfast tray? It's Did like, I oh, miss something and obvious? And then I saw this, I'm like, uh... I mean, you could still <laughs> argue that it's about the passion. He could. He might. I mean, he it's ambiguous whether he's it, it, a gay man. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. is backed up by that butt pat. But still, it's that's what people are at least referring to yeah. when they talk. No, about I it. totally get it. I uh, thought so, that was really amazing. I thought I was really impressive for its time as well. Yeah. So I am pissed at Channel Ten for having just Dude. the fucking bullshit to cut that. Can you believe mm. we are today years old? It's fucking twenty one. <laughs> that's how long it's been since i've seen this one probably syndication on channel 10 i don't think yeah. i've seen it so yeah Woo! i mean season two especially you know everyone talks about the classic run being from three to eight and it's unfortunate because so many of these get left out of the conversation mm-hmm. did our dvds have it did like you used to watch the dvds religiously oh yeah and it is something that when i did watch the dvds i was like oh that's new <laughs> mm-hmm. why didn't you tell us <laughs> <laughs> all this time because, yeah, the first time I watched the season two DVD, no doubt in like, I don't know, 2010 or something, I thought, you know, one day I'm going to start a podcast and I'm totally going <laughs> to fucking spring it on these guys and they're going to be so surprised. Well, fucking blown live on camera. Look, you played the long con and it was worth it. Dude, amazing. <laughs> and what's a moment that stood out to me for better or worse? Um, what's a moment that stood out to me for better or worse? Ah, damn it. That went really poorly. <laughs> um... I guess it's kind of funny just the obviousness of like the literal rainy day and Marge mm-hmm. setting up what about a rainy day. Yeah. Like, I don't know, but I feel like this episode just does tell the story of hubris and downfall so elegantly as well. And I think it is e- exemplified by Carl where all of a sudden people are rushing to do Homer's bidding and make his life better. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I, I love the undercut of that, though, where there's a big impassioned speech by Carl who's like, it was all and about Carl's you. It wrong. Wasn't... They don't give a sh- <laughs> <laughs> You know, you're oh. the tartar sauce and washing a bosch's hands. That was you. And it's then such everyone's a good just... speech, and he's not and wrong, just... but. The rabble in the audience is like, well, why should we listen to this man? He doesn't even have hair. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
God, that was funny. That sucks. Yeah. <laughs> and he was doing fucking good, too. That was a great mm. speech. Like Superman does fucking good. He did fucking well. Damn it all to hell, Beach. <laughs> Walked right into it. Ah. Walked right into it. Oh. Um, I mean, like, yeah, it was brilliantly written by Carl. Um, blah, blah, blah. But he's, he, he's, he speeched that. What's the boss tense of speech? He sport that. He gave <laughs> the hell out of that speech. He spoke oh, that yeah. damn well. <laughs> well, especially, yeah, backing it up with graphs and writing on the yeah. blackboard and it's like pronouncing big words for phonetically. Off the <laughs> fucking, off the cuff as off well. Off the cuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the fucking cards. confident and amazing. Like, I was so impressed with him. With mm-hmm. Homer, for damn sake. No, this is a <laughs> prime example of why people loved Homer as a character because... He's flawed, but he's so human. Yeah. 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 And this is, yeah, him going in with a bit of confidence and still not being enough. And but failing, just, doing yeah. great and still mm. failing and having to just yeah. fucking suck Man, it up and deal. The That's important, life. Yeah, the important lesson that, that you can do everything right and still fail. Oof. You know what? And I'm flipping the questionnaire around today because fuck it, renegade, pew. Um, <laughs> So just on the heart of this episode as well, Ooh. I think that's even backed up by the ending with Mr. Burns going, we're not so different, you and I. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Now get out of my office because we're actually very different. <laughs> yeah, get, get out of my office before I change my mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that, went, that was a nice moment from Mr. Burns. Like, it was really humanizing, wasn't it? For his yeah. fellow man, yeah. Not that he uh, gave a shit about anything the dude said in the speech. All these really valid points. But he gave him his old job back and wrapped things up in a neat little bow conveniently. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, you take from that that Mr. Burns has tried to give some speeches and yeah. probably not been taken seriously. Yeah. It's probably why he's got Smithers to do his dirty work and do the actual firing and stuff. Man, Whoa. Smithers was a stone-cold bitch in this episode. Oh, man. Wasn't he, he was just? fucking ice cold. And I Oof. love it. He was ready to kill. What are you doing? Gonna go hang yourself, Simpson? <laughs> <laughs> Huh. Oh, fucking God. <laughs> fucking Waylon Ouija right here. Yeah. Waylon Wayland. <laughs> he should be a wrestler. <laughs> like as in W-A-I-L. Yes. I- yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Waylon Lord. What's his name? Um, yeah. Waylon Waylon. Yeah. Waylon Waylon Smithers. He should, and then he- if he goes out and hunts whales, he'd be Waylon Waylon Waylon. Yes. All the well, pieces are falling into place. Hunting whales while yelling. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the dominoes are checking mate. <laughs> um, yeah. Wackiness. How was the wackiness in this episode? I would say the- slim to none. Although- oh, no. There was wiggity whack. Come on. Demoxinil works overnight. Over- and, oh, that's uh- where I was going to say as well. And, and disappears overnight as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I guess, you know, that's the high stakes world of uh, business. Yeah. And yeah. also, how can we forget the key? The, the executive key. washroom. <laughs> Don't sit on that filthy thing a moment longer. <laughs> oh, so good. Your first Every thing's on point. fucking dude. line is just... <laughs> God, wow. Yeah, I take pride in that impression. It fucking hurts. Yeah, I, mean, I can yeah. imagine. It does not sound comfortable. I don't know how he has that voice. Uh, it sounds like his voice box is just going to burst out of him like an alien. No, no, no. <laughs> this is the after scene. He always, he's, he's a man with no voice box at all. <laughs> Before the alien outburst, he used to talk like this. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, man. I suppose the thing is wacky, but I also sort of want to believe it's true. You know? Mm-hmm. Oh, look, it's story required. That's the thing. Yeah. There are two points yeah. uh, where I feel like the time skips ahead. Uh, one is the Demoxinil, and the other is Homer, you know, wakes up, has the great run. He then goes to the barbershop, and then Marge is talking to Patty and Selma with the yeah. implication yeah. that, it, it's, that been it's been... A, it's been time. He's not been this frisky in years. It's like, when did Solid you have time point. to fuck? Yeah, <laughs> he's been going to work. He's been different. da 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 da, da. Time's passed. So it's the implication. It's just, yeah, a little bit. It, again, this is story necessary. We have to get through it's this. It's ambiguous That's a, how long he's been an exec, I guess. That's a solid point. I was going to say, but they did have they had the long intro. They could have spared a little bit of time for a mm. time transition of mm. some kind. Mm. Like, you know, maybe had that uh, bit where he shows up to work and Lenny, Lenny and Carl, like, uh, something different about you. Yeah. Well, I mean, early Simpsons, like the long intro was an excuse for them to do less work. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. kind of documented. Yeah. Um, that's Simpsons. And yeah, it just got to a point around in season three and four where we were like, oh, we've got more story to tell. Well, this episode was so on point with its intro. It was just like, bam, one quick joke on the TV and then we're straight into the hair ad. Mm. The other Nazi <laughs> reference of Hitler, North Dakota. <laughs> Hitler, North Dakota. 
Now, I love the kind of quick fire, very subtle uh, jokes that were there. They're, they're watching grade school challenge. Yes. And then the follow up of to get your free brochure, send five dollars to Demoxinil. <laughs> like that that was blinking on message. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but just Homer bashing away his Sundays. Hair. Yeah. Hair. <laughs> yeah, it's powerful, man. Oh mm-hmm. man, we're just back at the heart again, and then him pleading to the fucking Demoxinil guy. Why doesn't he have hair? Like, surely he'd use his own product or you don't uh, get high on your own supply man pro mm. well he was he had sort of a wig i mean he had hair maybe he just likes the whole just the back of the head like uh, the horseshoe yeah. look Like maybe he's married to one of those women who find it virile oh yeah he shaves it he's a, it's tonsure mm-hmm. like a monk <laughs> <laughs> look, he does use it then shave it because he fucking can Mm-hmm. Uh, just while we're in heart, because we we already pewed over here, uh, just that ending with uh, you know Homer being like, oh, I'm in a dead end job, and you know the kids are gonna hate me, and you're not gonna love me as much because I'm ugly and bald. It's like mm. who hasn't had a long dark night once? Where it's like, what am I doing? Yeah. I'm, I'm and then they don't ruined. snuggle. He just leans on her chest, and he mm-hmm. gets oh oh ah. yeah the thumps, oh. man. Yeah, yeah. When you're feeling bad and a woman will let you lay your head on a boob, man, <laughs> that's that's some comforting shit right there. To boobs, su- <laughs> but in a different context. <laughs> I'm sorry, I reduced it to sounding like comforting boobs, but like seriously, that was God. a powerful moment, man. It There's was. The heart. There's the heart and the reprise mm. of "Yeah, You Are So Beautiful to Me." Who's a song mm. by Yeah Joe Cocker? Oh uh, yeah, he might Wonder. just be he might just be famous for the cover. I don't know. He is famous for a lot of covers. I think Carl was the heart of this episode. Like, oh, yeah. he was, for he gave everything understand. for Homer. Mm-hmm. Oh, he did. For, for reasons of being a good person, for nothing other than, you know, but that's, love your that's fellow the, man. The curious thing, he does not need this job. You see his apartment, it's immaculate. He throws yeah. away a, a grand to Smithers like it's mm. nothing. That's it. He's Mary Who Poppins, Who is this man? man? He's Mary Poppins. Yes, I like it. It's, a, it's a, the grown-up version of Mary Poppins. 100%. Yeah. And then he opens his umbrella, doesn't fly away. He gives it back mm-hmm. to the. But, but he could have. He was getting ready. There was that was the reference, you know, yeah, just yeah. in case we didn't ha- hang the hat on the lampshade, <laughs> which it kind of was being again the literal rainy day. <laughs> yeah. And then him walking out, and it's just like the little <laughs> that you hear as well. <laughs> like, oh, fuck, man. <laughs> Proves he was not an angel. He was a mere mortal man who got the sniffles. But a stand-up yeah. dude. Mm-hmm. Did it feel like an episode of The Simpsons? Are these characters we know and love? This is as Simpsons-y as it gets to me. Like, there's no episode you could point at as being more iconic of The Simpsons. Yeah, Just... this is an episode that says to the world, Here I am. Don't yeah. judge me. Love oh my... me. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And sort of, for so early as well, this is surprising. Because mm. especially, like, we've done season one now we've finished reviewing that and there are some mm-hmm. bumpy ass moments in that <sighs> yeah. season yes i yes but then you get fucking miracles like moaning lisa or it's like okay this is showing the show to come and like this one does sort of feel like it is so well realized but there are a handful of other season two episodes that came after this that i could point to that didn't have a grip on the characters as well as this does mm. Mm. Well, I think someone just had a grip on the sting of male patent baldness. Oh, and who, wrote who, who did write this episode? John Vitti. I was just about to look it up. Let's it see how bald this was. Yeah. No. He didn't write all of them, apparently. <laughs> I don't believe it. Yeah, I'd say that's a dude who's had some demoxinil. Hold on, let me do a quick <laughs> screen share. There we go. There he is with an angry bird. Yeah, it, it, it's more of a very heavy recession along the. Uh, the, the the part um, he looks oddly familiar Who's it is a lot like 2008 off? what <laughs> global oh, financial crisis finger. joke for you there <laughs> Oof. Uh, <laughs> thank recession. you thank you yeah <laughs> uh, but what about like the individual characters uh how is uh, the integrity for you guys on that i mean mr burns has his yeah again uncharacteristic moment of kindness but it is given context i think yeah, it works really well. i think in terms of like a humanized Mr. Burns. It's, yeah. it's good. He's not always that character, but I no, think he like, is now and then. The rest of the episode, if you'd never seen this before, you get him entirely because he has yeah, the whole, you know, yeah. we have to give our one token promotion per year. And I love the reference that um, Lenny makes early on. It's like, oh, $1,000, one less ivory back scratch of Mr. Burns. Yeah. And then later on, he's like, $1,000, I was going to buy that ivory back scratcher. 
I'd say Smithers, maybe, yes and no. Like, it's definitely mm. got his weaseling yeah. obsession with Burns, but he's way too killer, you know? He, um, he can be vicious. Remember, you know, Homer the Smithers? He starts uh, a fist fight over that one. Yeah. yeah, but this one, it's like, he's like, dead man walking and fucking yeah. go, go hang, hang yourself. Go hang yourself? Yeah. That's not True. Smithers. Smithers is a real sweetheart. Yeah, it it's a bit darker than we'd come and like speaking mm-hmm. of darker as well lisa's like one of very few lines in this episode is like what do you want sweetie it's like an absence of wo- mood swings and some stability in my life yeah Jesus. rich <laughs> but real good lisa line especially early Actually, lisa line yeah this is carrying on from moaning lisa which i just said was fucking spectacular so my mistake <laughs> <laughs> We just have to see a very extremely depressed and verbose kid. There's not many other characters in this to analyze. I mean, Homer, mm-hmm. of course, is... Huh. Homer's the way he's supposed to be before they sort of lose the plot in the later years. Yeah, just watch him just fucking winning is so... It's nice. Mm. Man. At not winning through cheating or anything either. Yeah. Is really refreshing. There's some... Yeah, the first half where everything's just going his way, it's oh. just dreamy to watch, isn't it? There's a character moment I really like, which is where he's reviewing candidates for the secretary position. And I like, first of all, he pronounces resume, resume. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, and also, I like when Marge calls up and asks how it's going, and he's just immediately honest, oh, all these women keep making kissy faces at me. <laughs> I, I love that, because to him, again, that's a golden retriever moment of, you know, this is what's happening. He doesn't try to. Yeah. sugarcoat it or yeah. hide it or anything like that he's like oh all these women keep make flirting with me it sucks Marge that's it like he's it. so uninterested in that mm-hmm. oh. yeah and you know uh, by the same token uninterested in Carl who like yeah. his, his motivations are his own don't try to understand Carl you, you won't you know he's what? a more complex you know man what? I'm than gonna all pop, of us. I'm gonna pop out right now maybe mm-hmm that was his motivation maybe carl heard that heard him saying he's not interested in all these secretaries mm. trying to seduce him mm. hey wife i i don't want to i don't want to sleep with any of these kissy face ladies maybe that's mm. what carl heard in homer you know the honesty yeah and was like this is a man i can bring to the very top of the yeah. integrity now, yeah yeah that was a very integritous moment of of homer to use the <laughs> to use the derivative integritous um, yes yeah a, a high integritous moment <laughs> highly integritous uh, mm. but yes or no would you watch this one again yes. i would watch it again right now you, you, you know I would, need, I, would, I would need some space uh, i gotta gotta let it breathe for a second well, maybe we can watch some episodes that have share thematical elements mm. with this one. So let's think about what other Simpsons episodes we'd pair with this one. Uh, episode where Marge loses her hair. Incidentally, the um, oh, yeah. Sherry, Sherry Bobbins. Bobbins. Ah, Sherry Bobbins. Mm. Yep. Did you just double pair us? Wow. Pipu, Renegade. Oh, oh. oh pair. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. Um, Ones where Homer gets promoted, of course. Homer the Smithers, yeah. Homer the Smithers. Uh, just one-off stellar characters. So, yeah. you know, <sighs> yeah, well, Stacey LaBelle, Hank Scorpio. Scorpio. Sure. Oh, and also pair it with that treehouse of horror where Homer gets snake's hair. Mm. Yes. Or um, That is actually one of my favourite treehouse of horror segments. Possibly it, where it snake's really hair comes to uh, life. I believe it's hell to pay. It sure is. Mm. Are we talking about the same episode? You are. Well, Wow. <laughs> anyway, as much praise as we are giving this episode, no episode is perfect. So mm-hmm. let's get all mean and try and fucking rewrite this 30 year old thing. Oh, yeah. Peter, you will start with you. What would you like to change about this episode? Look, cut that beginning down, the uh, intro sequence, so we can get a little bit more. I would appreciate a bit of more time transition between Homer getting the hair and then, you know, talking about how great his life has improved with Patty and Selma. So, and just a couple other jokes. I felt like, again, this one's hard to tell because I know all these lines. I wrote so many of them down before they happened. So it's mm. hard to know. But that said, we've watched plenty of classic episodes where I still laugh at the parts that I, you know, even if I already pre-write the note. Mm. Just a few more. I mean, it's still, you know, a family comedy at heart. I would appreciate a few more gags here and there. But that said, it's it just hits so differently as, a, as an adult. Definitely. Mm. Uh, Danny, what would you like to change about this episode? You know what? We could just, the time transition things, we could just have like, even if it was, you know, three weeks later, blah, blah, blah. We could have like a something. No um, title cards. No title cards? Fine. <laughs> you have really jarring title cards like a no. like Kevin Smith film. <laughs> or one with a French accent like Spongebob. Yes. Three weeks later. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's going to ruin things. 
Um, <laughs> I just don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I enjoyed this. At the end of it, I was sitting there by myself saying, holy fuck. That's, mm. I was that impressed. I don't want to change anything here. I would like subjectivity mm. is a big thing, but for me, this is this is wow, wow, guy. Mm. This is a perfect thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's got them feels. Yeah, this one, uh, it's a really well written early season that, like, I can't point to any immediate structural problems with it. Um, that I think all the beats are right, but yeah, just mm-hmm. following on what you were saying, BT, is just the it's just wanting a bit more of it, and I feel like, yeah, there is sort of a bit of. Uh, rushing through certain things that could definitely be a bit more fleshed out. And certainly in terms of, like, the... I mean, again, I don't have a problem with the way the beats played out with Homer's downfall and Smithers conniving and, like, Mm -hmm. going under Mr. Burt's... Oh, someone in the nuclear power plant did this. Oh, (laughs) punish this unnamed person. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I sort of like that. I just, I don't know, wish it was a bit earlier, but I don't know how. Again, this is a very well-written episode. But yeah, following on from BT's point, I wish we could get more of the beginning, more of the mm. end, and probably more of the middle too. Yeah, sure, why yeah. not? No, I hear you. I just feel like, like I, I, I was feeling the same sort of thing, but the timing and the pacing of the beats mm-hmm. are so tight that I feel like adding anything is just going to slow the, the pace, like the feel of yeah. it down. Yeah, um, you're probably right, honestly. <laughs> And like know, to it, to its credit, the act that's flawless that I wouldn't touch anything is the third act. And we've said it plenty of times. If you're gonna get anything right, stick the landing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, more gags. There is a bit of that early season slowness, but yeah, nothing that like, yeah, this is an impressive episode. Mm-hmm. Which means we are here. Danny, do you have any other notes? I th- I think you get the gist of my like <laughs> this this one I really enjoyed every single line. I could just sit here and scroll through it and talk about the impact and how it dr- everything drives the plot and how there's no, like, <sighs> all I'm doing is gushing. All I'm doing is gushing. <laughs> you can probably trim that. <clears throat> no, I have no other notes, Elliot. BJ, have you got other notes? Of course I do. That's what I do here. I love Homer's bit where he's sitting with the Demoxinol guy. He's like, well, fine. <laughs> forget you, pal. Thanks for nothing. And then later on in the retail, he's yeah. like, and I said, forget you, pal. Thanks for nothing. And I stormed out of there. I That's so very <laughs> Homer. And it's great. It's human too, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, this is arguably Homer at his most human, which I really love. But yeah, the idea that he didn't like change the words of the story, <laughs> just the emotion. <laughs> just the emphasis. is really good. Yeah, you can tell he was walking back replaying it three times until you know, yeah. until it <laughs> turned into that. Oh yeah. Um I like when Smithers and Burns are looking through the cameras and like, who's that? Oh, it looks like Homer Simpson, only more dynamic and resourceful somehow. <laughs> I love the line, it's stuck in my brain forever, just you conceal it. When they're getting the uh, <laughs> yeah the suit. <laughs> oh man, it's fucking Firestein's line deliveries in this one. The one that lives rent free in my brain is when he does look at the executive washroom and stunning. Yep, absolutely stunning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anytime you see something amazing, that's just plays. There's a transition between the checkered floor of the bathroom, which then becomes like the windows of the insurance company bill or the office building at night. I quite like that. I like mm-hmm. how it takes a tense moment and then gets a joke in there of, yeah, Smithers throwing down the towel and then that just that yeah. basically ball boy, but for the washroom. <laughs> <laughs> Runs up and grabs it off the clean floor, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, just another another heart line was Homer just going, Carl, you saved me. Why? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah, a bit of a uh, different Homer we get here, which is, uh, he's all, boy must die. And Bart's like, oh, I love you, Dad. It's like, ah, oh, t- you got me with a thing. <laughs> you got me with a thing. Yeah. The three then, things that will haunt you for the rest oh, of your life. Man, though. they were so good, right? Mm. <laughs> and boldness is hereditary, which, surprisingly, is not what the movie Hereditary is about. <laughs> <laughs> That's just generations of men going, oh. Oh, honey. Oh. <laughs> Patting their heads. Mm. surprisingly not about that it's uh, weird yeah <laughs> looking forlorn down at the hairbrush <laughs> Fuck. hereditary i still want to hear see that but like with the same soundtrack like <laughs> yeah yeah oh yeah same director same car same haunting themes but you know hair loss <laughs> fuck but yeah i love that as well just with the doubling down of the downfall fuck i lost my assistant but you know mm-hmm. still got the magic potion him driving home uh, being like oh shit i've got no money i've got no assistant everything's falling apart and mm-hmm. then it cuts straight to bart being like "Ooh, 
Yeah. What mischief can Barty Boy cause? I nearly said, what mischief can Daniel cause? There is something Freudian going on there. there. Indeed. And, you know, you it do does say Cowabunga a lot as you, mm. you know, and grind rails pants. on your sta- skateboard. Eat my shorts, Elliot. Yes. Um, and also it comes down to Homer's hubris of, like, not saving any money. And then if he had stayed and tried to put them, you know, turn the Domoxenil back up before chasing Bart, it might have kept some. Yeah, I think, okay, yeah, back to what I changed. I feel like that's the thing. We don't really see Homer's frivolity with, like, um, the new money he is he he's getting from this job or maybe surely, he's making the has same. he not had a paycheck yet like yeah. surely he can afford the thousand dollar thing it's like an important expense right that's that's an important expense to his career yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah 90s money as well they like that were dealing in cents back then still mm-hmm. yeah by two dollars you can see a fine picture show get a hot dog and catch the ferry all the way to mayfair fuck we talked weird in the 90s <laughs> Yo, I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. Oh, uh, yeah, that was a quote from Friends, wasn't it? I'll be there for you, fella. <laughs> Say, Phoebe, how are you doing? God, oh my I'm, God. Ju- I'm just swell, Chandler. <laughs> <laughs> like we've broken something and I don't know what it is. I can't, I can't, I can't do it. Every, the thing is, now I can't talk normal either. <laughs> all right well i'll bring the you've broken, me. Too you've broken me live on a podcast that's now i can't speak either way <sighs> um, and we're recording and we're back yeah uh homer in the beginning i like the different whoa, hairstyles whoa, whoa. as well whoa 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 what now it's time for his final notes Elliot's final notes. Yes! Oh, you're <laughs> so good at it. Oh, you're so good at it. Gonna need mm. some more water. Yeah, Homer's different hairstyles throughout the episode yeah. as well. Is like, especially when Simpsons was in this early stage of animation, they didn't really go out. Like, these little details are nice. I love the yeah. early Bob yeah. Ross look as well. I like <laughs> oh, to think man. that Homer got a perm in this moment. When he's got, like, the, the Elvis coif at the end, the pompadour mm. thing. And when he, like, gets angry and shakes it out, that 90s, like, bangs it, coming forward. When it's yeah. draped in the Demoxinil on the floor. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to say that's oh. something I want to... I want to see the put Demoxinil in a glass bottle and have it break, because that makes more sense that it's all gone, you know? Yeah, I love it. I love it. Oh, uh, and just the whole thing with Bart as well. I, but by the way, I actually... But Vision had a character break as well. Lewis had Ooh. Milhouse's voice for some reason. <laughs> well, he gets confused. He's young. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, that's on Bart. Yeah, maybe he's just so self-focused as well. He forgot what his own best friend sounded like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so as much as the nice moment with Marge saying that you are so beautiful reprise, it feels like that dude's just fucking yelling it at her at this oh, point as well. Yeah, he is not... Gr- that is not a great rendition. No. <laughs> we paid it's good all... money. I mean, Carl paid good money. Yeah, he's just like, ah, this is going well. He should be but like, look, Carl paid who the good fuck money. did they send? <laughs> <laughs> Carl paid good money to get the job done, and damn it, he got the job done. That said, yeah. I don't really like that song. Oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah. What song should they have sung, Beach? <laughs> Bam, there you can fix it. There's Ooh. something you can mm. fix. Uh, Stink Fist by Tool. <laughs> Happy anniversary? <laughs> Elbow deep. Within the borderline. By his elbow deep in the borderline now. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. And Carl signs off the letter at the end to Homer as your obedient servant. Yeah. A he's dot he's into the kinky ah, shit. Beach got A it. dot ham. <laughs> All right. It is time to rank this thing. Danny, why don't you go first? Uh, I'm giving this a bronze, but hopefully an upper bronze. No, dude, I'm giving this cubic. I, this is like <laughs> this. This episode is really hit me like as hard as any episode has ever done. I think my like my other big ones would be like Lisa the Pony or mm-hmm. like uh, the Boy Scouts or the comic book. And this is they're so wildly different in style just because they're like five seasons later. But mm. this hits me as hard as they do. And this is I, I have z- no critiques, no critiques mm. of it. So why give it anything less? I'm gushing mm. again. I'm sorry, guys. It's wasting <laughs> airtime. That's fine. That's all right. Well, yeah, I'll be the one uh, representing, you know, to bring it back to How referencing you? Stink Fist by Tool. <laughs> is, yeah, I'm on that gold cubic borderline. Um, <laughs> I think I am actually going to fall to gold, though. Like, as many things as this episode does right, I still think it... 
Um, you make me sick. I can't do a. I can't do a <laughs> fine scene. One bad dude, but it sounded like it was about to start hurting. Yeah. So. Oh no! I, I need so much fucking chamomile after this. <laughs> Can you say yeah. chamomile like Harvey Feinstein? Chamomile. Uh, no, no. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he blew out his voice live said, on I went, air. I went too deep. You never go full Feinstein. <laughs> 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 Only I can do that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to fall to a gold because, yeah, it's just, I don't think it is uh, as strong, but it, it's fucking close. BT. Uh, look, I'm on the gold as well. In like a personal self reflective kind of way, I get the cubic. I kind of want the cubic because the more you kind of scratch at it, the kind of deeper and more complex it gets. That said, that's from a degree of projection from what I think they're adding little parts in. Uh, and I, I remember, I think it's season two, was it uh, what Last Temptation of Homer, which I'm pretty sure I gave a cubic. And that's because like that is a masterfully written episode. It's not heavy on the jokes, but every single line is just full of subtext and depth. That has a bit more universality to it, I think. Whereas this one, I appreciate so much more as an adult, but from like an objective standpoint, I feel like I'm here for jokes and for good times. It's got the hearts, and I love that. It, there's a lot to this episode, which is why this wrap-up is taking so long. But <laughs> there's just, I think, I don't, weirdly enough, instead of having the prime audience for it, we needed an outsider. We needed a, like a, a young woman with all her hair who wanted to, wanted to watch this episode and give us her thoughts because we need the opposite of us, us basically. You guys yeah. are both dead to me. Dead to me forever. <laughs> I was never alive, B. <laughs> and yeah, overall, uh, that'll be a shiny gold. It'll be the second episode from season two to get a shiny gold. It'll be joining two cars in every garage and three eyes on every fish. That's a uh, Actually, another Mr. Burns episode. Mm. That's where he tries to become a senator or mayor or some... Mayor. Some representative. No, mm. Congress? No, it's... That's Mayor, ba- Mayor Bailey. It's Mayor Bailey. He's trying no, to No, because it's still Mayor Quimby back in the day. It's ah, well... Governor. 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 Bailey. That's the one that's between the two. Yeah, and I actually think this is uh, good company for it because they're both mm. sort of examples, because that's episode four examples of really early precocious simpsons in a way that yeah you definitely know the potential of what the show's going to be and yeah, yeah what an what an excellent time a shiny excellent time mm-hmm. all right guys well look that about does it for the simpsons index for this week whoa, um, whoa 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 i mean we're just getting started here we're this only just party's getting started. just getting started. come on everybody can make it <laughs> come on it's been great <laughs> well, the party's not over as well because we're doing kick-ons in podcast form. That's right. Mm. The plugs. This, aren't, aren't podcast plugs the kick-ons of podcasting? Uh, yes. If you've not quite had enough of our voices, you can listen to <laughs> us on Thrones of Game, the Game of Thrones podcast where we watch the series backwards. Elliot O.J. O'Neill has now watched all of Game of Thrones in reverse order. That's right. We did it. We actually <sighs> finished it. And I got to say, it's some beautiful work. It's I love it. It's it's tender to my heart. Uh, yep. That said, if you're like, I'm tired of hit listening to white guys review TV, what else can I listen to? You can listen to a scripted podcast based entirely in pulp genres. That's right. Our other, other show, Pulp Fury Radio, where we take uh, pulp genres like horror, fantasy, and sci-fi and give you a nice little twist, nice little flavorsome twist of story with some amazing actors, some folly work we did ourselves. I'm very proud of that. All original content out there for you right now. It's just available for free because we love you people. Uh, yeah, and of course, yeah, our Patreon at patreon.com slash SideQuest Studios, where um, for the price of a cup of coffee a month, you can get mm. bonus podcasts every single week uh, with our shows, except when he's not, where BT's reviewing The Simpsons he mi- that he missed when we did them on the Index proper. And That's also- right, more of me, baby. <laughs> and if you want even more BT, we have another show that we're doing on the Patreon, uh, which is called The Story of the Chalk, uh, which is where me, BT, and Danny uh, riff on what actually happened to lead Bart mm. to write the phrases on the chalkboards that he did. Yeah. The stories we never see. That one's pretty funny. That yeah. one's a lot of fun, yeah. And there is a new episode of that coming out this Tuesday of, at the time of recording, so... Yeah, go check that out. Um, guys, this has been a blast. You know what? I had a lot of fun tonight. Although you two are dead to me. How dare you? How dare <laughs> you guys? Oh, I wow. I do have the pods, man. Not for you. You Forgive cold, me. clinical bastard. <laughs> you unfeeling machine. That's me. That was to you two in order. <laughs> <laughs> That's- 
Yay, I'm the bastard. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we better get out of here. Once again, thank you, Danny Rosewell. It has been an absolute pleasure and a privilege. BT, once again, thank you. I deserve this. I love it. I am nature's greatest miracle. <laughs> and I've been your host, Elliot J. O'Neill. And that is all the mustard in the house. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Simpsons Index podcast, which is also an online spreadsheet available at thesimpsonsindex.com. You can chat to us online at facebook.com slash thesimpsonsindex or at Simpsons Index on Twitter and Instagram. And now please stay tuned for the bonus scenes. Oh, that was my worst one yet. <laughs> uh, now, take, take, take two, take two. Now that is all the mustard in the house. <laughs> Fuck it. Nice. <laughs> now say chamomile. <laughs> chamomile. Yep. Um, I, I don't, I don't think... Oh, sorry, no, go, go, go. No, no, I'm, I'm hitting the same my note, man. I don't think that it's a particularly wacky app. Find out next time on The Simpsons Index. <laughs> the next exciting <laughs> episode of... Dragon Ball Z. I don't know the theme song for that. It's not Ion I actually Spring think that was Field. it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dragon, pause it. dragon, dragon, dragon Ball Z. Oh yeah, no, that was it. Really? Yeah. I always thought it was funny because it sounds like it's either up the dragon or fuck the dragon. <laughs> fuck the dragon, Dragon Ball Z. Sorry, should we stop recording? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. All right, pause it. Pause the records. I think I might just press the balls button, boys.